Hello friends. Welcome to the Muse fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see title. What if Naruto became the overpowered demon lord with the powers of Kami? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Well, this is pleasantly surprising, with the 4 reviews I got since uploading the story. Thanks to the first 4 I read in the reviews, those just gave me some ideas. Now, onto the public answering of questions that so many other authors do on many occasions, I answer these because they were the first 4 reviews I saw, not because of them being interesting points. Zarcade. I'm glad that you liked it, however, it seems I need to work on my summary skills, now. Loki 09 aka TTRE 208. Just like with Zarcade, I'm glad you like it. However, the Holy Emperor's will can't be directed at me. How can the Emperor direct his will at himself? Jokes aside, please don't tell. I don't want the Chidori special. Something about the Chidori and the Golden Throne not mixing. Banji Securdia. Um, wow, two words, friend. But I thank you. Dark Snyder 05. And so am I, friend. So am I. As to Naruto's finishing height, the process was still experimental, hence the term, test subject, in the form of a baby. Naruto won't be 7 foot tall at 13, he hasn't, as a full body, even finished growing, that's for when he's older. And when he can actually get some proper nutrients. Seriously, people, there's still the, poor as the poorest bum with massive scapegoat rep, factor to consider. The growth only happens when there is something to actually process in the stomach. And the process has a mind of its own. Kayubi chooses what can happen, being the process in the not flesh. As for the Hanada comment, I have no idea, or want to know, what is in that head of yours, boy, but then again, there's an attempt no I won't give away the storyline. Now that I got that out of the road, I will tell you all that I am aware that Hanada's attempted kidnapping was when she was three, but I wish to move it up to five, after all, I made the Kayubi out to be a mere process and device, this is nothing. Maybe make the Sandame an actual monkey? Nah. Now, I shall tell you all about my writer problems. I have no idea how good I am. I do things sporadically, as in, there may be random times where I don't update fast, yet others where I spew it out like last night's party drinks, and I, either under explain something, or over explain it, take your pick. I am unsure of how it is possible, but I am capable of doing such a thing. Now, I am running out of author note space, so here's the story. And I am sorry for the spelling mistakes within the last chapter. I believe the uploading system in FF might have something that keeps altering files as they are published. Fact replaced by fat? That already happened in America, apparently. I am not racist. But I did update those mistakes with the best of my ability. Story as follows. Naruto. Genetic indifference. Chapter 1. Growth problems and the shy damsel. Sitting at the Hokage desk. Serutobi the third Hokage was tired, why? He had just had one of the most interesting of council meetings he's had in years. It was all to do with the boy named Naruto Uzumaki. Five years ago, when he had to make that law, Hiyashi had not informed him that he knew of Naruto's second heart, only the Sandame and his personal doctor knew of it for secrecy reasons. When Hiyashi had brought it up in the council, however, then things went crazy. The Hyuga stated, bloodline and the Uchiha stated, demon taint. Naturally, most of the clans thought it the latter, minus the Aburame, Nara and Inazuka clans. They simply kept their mouth shut. Said secret of Naruto's second heart was then kept a secret. A deadly secret that the Sandame would only inform people on a need-to-know basis. The other fact that Naruto was also growing other organs of unknown purpose, and literally having his skeleton grow and change into something different in internal aspects meant that this would be something he had to rectify, quickly. Most of the council were actually pressing for Naruto to be unfit for ninja duty, or training, seeing as most of the processes his body went through left him unwell. It was, disconcerting, to say the least. The old man lit up his pipe. Minato, my boy, did you know the Kayubi would affect your son so, greatly? Well, at least the boy seemed to be intelligent. Finding the usual mental tests used on young prospective ninja to find their mental ability had been quite a game Naruto played so well. That is, the ones used for seven-year-old children, who are starting out in the ninja academy. 
Naruto had only turned five, earlier in the year. He was showing signs that he would be a smart ninja, if he would be able to stand without balance problems. Right now, it was December the 22nd, the day before the birthday of a certain Hyuga heiress. Sarutobi was happy for the girl, seeing as her mother always talked about her like she was a little angel, and wondered how she was dealing with her younger sister, Hanabi, who was only just born. Then again, there was also the slight problem of what else was happening tomorrow, it being the day that Cloud Country would send in their diplomat for their alliance treaty, as an apology for their war against Fire Country where they tried to steal the Byakugan. And as for right now, he had the biggest pile of paperwork that he had ever seen, sitting on his desk, it was causing the table to bend slightly. Some days, the Hokage wished he could just lie down and go to sleep like a normal citizen could. And he knew that Naruto sometimes felt the same way. Today, Naruto Uzumaki was having a very happy day. Not. As of his turning five, earlier in the year, he had to live on his own. Sure, the old man was very generous in supplying an apartment and a weekly allowance to get food and stuff with, but he was alone, as usual. Oh, and the random pains had started again. Usually, he just grows a bit, or there's the odd addition to his body like that thing that seems to change the blood in his body. He isn't sure of how he knows this, but there is still the fact that he does. At least it isn't as weird as the dreams he keeps having that seem to teach him things about his own body, things he had decided to keep quiet for the time being. Oh well, at least the villagers aren't going to try and kill him again, because they all seem to be preparing for some event that is happening tomorrow. I wonder what it is. He asked in his mind, as he lay on his bed in pain, the orange covers sewn in a messy tangle across the bed. Usually he would go around in very baggy gray pants, and loose black shirts of sizes too large for him. Of course, it wouldn't be too long before he would need to buy a new bigger set. The current ones he wore he had bought on his birthday, and only now did he almost fit them. He had already become taller than the other kids. Maybe that is why the villagers kept attacking him. No, it can't be. They keep calling him demon, and other choice words. Demons aren't characterized to be tall. Even then, he would show them. He would become Hokage and take the old man's job so he can show them that he isn't a demon. Now, if only the shops would stop overpricing all the ninja gear when they actually let him in. Suddenly, the pain stopped, before hitting him head on as his stomach hurt more than he had experienced. Right now, he was in pain and he could not get to that blissful plane of unconsciousness. He never could, as he seemed to have been building up a resistance to the pain from the sudden growing his body would do, and also from the odd beating that the villagers had tried upon him, once or twice. He screamed, semi-loudly, it wasn't hurting as much anymore. Suddenly, three men barged into his front door. They held heavy, blunt objects and wore ski masks from Snow Country, obviously bought from a novelty store. They were villagers trying to pose as Anbu. They looked like they wanted blood as they approached the broad blonde boy, one of them cracking his knuckles in preparation. This was a normal start to the month for Naruto Uzumaki. Well, there goes the fact of some not bothering today. Naruto thought. He knew that the real Anbu would be here in two minutes. The real Anbu didn't like imitators. A distant dripping sound echoed through the dank tunnels, pipes and bars running along the walls like a sewer the odd view screen dotting the surface of some of them. Waiting behind the giant bars held together by a simple slip of paper with, seal, painted across it, the Kyubi no Kitsune lay upon its side. Currently, he had the effects of his process upon his mind, figuring out what would really be needed, and what to not grow as a fact, seeing as it would be ineffective. Basically, he was trying to figure out a way to turn his tenant into a space marine, without the factor of a powered armor suit or technology of cybernetics. Hell technology in general. There was also the fact that all the space marines had the black carapace implanted in them, no matter what happened, and he could not grow any. Not like he really needed to, anyway. Chakra, the other factor that he had to add, was also making things interesting. This was because many things were possible with the use of chakra, like walking on walls, or even gaining massive strength like an actual space marine, making his additions not as flashy as what would have first been thought. Although, a second heart, an extra stomach that could filter out poisons, an organ that has more complicated uses attached to said second stomach, and a third, multi-lung, that can breath toxic poisonous air safely, then you have some advantages, despite the fact that he hadn't added the lung yet, that would be for the next day, when he has had some more food to eat. 
The bad facts about some of the more unavoidable effects of his presence? Increased muscle growth could have easily been attained through rigorous training, and the skeleton being increased in size wasn't such a good idea. Being a ninja meant stealth. The smaller the target, the harder to hit or notice, that was not what Naruto was. Hell, the kid liked to display orange for some reason, wherever he decided to go, unless it was at home. The nine-tailed fox chuckled at this thought, remembering that small detail about some of the chapters, who disliked stealth in favor of displaying their colors to the enemy, and smashing them to bits. That is probably what his tenant won't do, if his guesses are right. Well, it was a good thing that he was performing the hypnotherapy upon his tenant that would allow him to utilize his new abilities, or things might have gotten hairy. Suddenly, he heard a scream of pain, and knew that it wasn't from his work. If it was from his work, then the room would not have shaken so. If it was him, he would have been having fun causing someone pain. This was done by someone else. Kayubi growled. His tenant was his only link left to life itself. If the boy dies, so did the demon. The fox steeled itself and began to heal his tenant until the Anbu arrived. Within the dark corridors of an alleyway, during broad daylight, a dog masked Anbu sneezed. This startled dog's teammates a lot. Dog never got sick on duty. Bird, next to dog, asked in the Anbu voice, Dog san, are you okay? Dog merely shook it off, yes, I'm fine, oh, shit. He exclaimed at the end. He issued orders in code seals, signaling that there was a residential disturbance at Fox Cave, the apartment of one Naruto Uzumaki. The bodies of three intoxicated villagers lay at the feet of one sand dame of Konoha, three minutes later. The unconscious form of Naruto was upon the couch in the corner of the Hokage's office. The blonde needed to be knocked unconscious by a powerful jutsu, because the boy was in a lot of pain. Boy, was the Hokage glad that this Anbu team leader, and Anbu captain, had a heart. Dog-san, good work. You and your squad are dismissed. You may return to your duties. The Hokage ordered. The Anbu left, only for three more to enter the room. Those three took the, less than legally intoxicated, civilians to a prison, where they would meet with a certain head of interrogation. Sarutobi smiled. Only then, did he walk over to Naruto, and wake him up. Oh old man, H. Hey. Naruto weakly stated. His wounds were already worked over, disappearing, but there was obvious signs of something else happening as well. Naruto-kun, my boy, is something wrong? Is it happening again? He asked. Why, yeah. My stomach, hurts. Naruto said. It was now that a certain clan head, Hiyashi Hayuga of the Hayuga clan, made his entrance. Serutobi, I think I deserve to know why, oh. He started, not finishing as he knew that there was someone else in the room. Precisely, the boy with two hearts and a demon sealed in him. Pardon my intrusion, Hokage-sama, it can wait for more secure ears. He stated, before he found an old hand on his shoulder, stopping him calmly. Hiyashi-san, just the person I wanted to see, I need the help of your eyes. Serutobi asked. What's in it for me? Hiyashi replied with his question. This is your pardon, my friend. So long as you keep this a triple S rank secret, you are fine. Serutobi answered, smiling nicely. He then got the intercom and called for his medical specialist, who arrived exactly seven seconds later. It seemed that he had just had his lunch break and was ready to get back to work, despite his fatigue. Hiyashi raised his eyebrows in recognition. This guy was trained by Sunande herself, before she left. Makushi-san, a pleasant surprise. Same here, Hiyashi-san. Hokage-sama, is the matter dealing with young Uzumaki-san, here? The gray-haired man asked. Yes, Makushi-san, it is. I hope Hiyashi-san can help us with this, as it seems it has happened again. Serutobi answered. Hiyashi's eyes went wide in slight fear. Were they talking about the seal? Was there a risk of escape for the demon? Don't tell me he developed another auxiliary organ? The doctor exclaimed in disbelief, as Hiyashi activated his bloodline to look at the boy. He gasped at what he saw, the secondary heart that he noted five years ago. A tubular shaped organ was located between the two hearts, it seemed to be aiding the system further, despite unknown how it was done. A small spherical organ was located also within the chest cavity, use unknown like the one mentioned earlier. 
What was obvious was the fact that the chest cavity had undergone ossification of a major kind, with the expansion of the skeleton. Hitting the heart would be hard to do, as the ribcage was a set of interlaced bone plates. Hell, the skeleton's long bones were all strengthened to a point where it would take a well trained shunin to break them. That is saying something. What else? Oh, there was a tiny organ that had grown within the main artery of the blonde's blood vessels, and the blood seemed to be more efficient, by what the doctor was stating, huh? The two unknown organs he noted before were increasing bone efficiency and muscle development. Wow, what was this kid, hell, now he had spotted some other liver-like fleshy organ the size of a golf ball, within the chest cavity. It was attached to a very complicated array of blood vessels. What next? Oh, now there's some little wonder organ the size of a pea, in the back of his brain. It was noticeable. What it did? The doctor had just mentioned something about improving sleeping patterns and being able to rest while aware of the surroundings. He or she may be a Hyuga, but even he learned anatomy to a medic's level, with his bloodline and all. What's this? It was a second stomach. Attached to it was some nerves that went to, oh, crap. Yet another organ located in the spine, between the cervical and thoracic vertebrae. Now this was interesting, considering the fact that the body looked like it was preparing for more additions, like what he could possibly call a third lung. It was obvious that the second stomach and extra nerves and such were the new additions, the doctor and the Hokage made no motion of knowledge to them. Hokage sama, Makushi san, what the has been happening with this kid? He blurted, very unhyuga like. This was the first time Serutobi had ever heard Hiyashi swear like that, since he had first made love to his wife on his honeymoon. If only Serutobi hadn't been on vacation in the room next door that night, Hyuga were a perverted bunch. But nothing beat his old student, who was in the room on the other side of that couple. Jiraiya sneezed, letting the women in the bathhouse know of the peeping old white-haired man near the fence. Naruto was more than a little disturbed by the Hyuga clan head's eyes having never seen those eyes like that without the owner trying to kill him with hard pokes of doom. Oh, and the fact that the Hokage and Makushi had been talking of his condition, with Hiyashi in the room, made him feel uncomfortable. This only lasted five seconds, before he decided to introduce himself. Hello, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, who are you? He asked, sure looking only slightly five years old, but with a slightly deeper voice. Sarutobi smiled. At least the boy kept showing, double the heart, than other people would. Even Hiyashi had to take a moment to recover. Do you know what has happened to your body? He asked the boy, shaking his hand. The boy shook his head, in a way that said, no. Hiyashi raised an eyebrow, you now have a second stomach. Naruto didn't look surprised. In fact, it seemed like he had already gotten used to that fact. Great, I already have a second heart, now I have a second stomach, hey more ramen for me, he stated, making Hiyashi wonder where Naruto even got the nutrients to grow like he did if he ate ramen constantly. It even looked like he was going to voice the question, until the doctor stated. Don't bother asking or finding out, not even I can figure it out. Naruto only smiled, before clutching his stomach again. Obviously, the second stomach was still growing. Naruto would still not be able to go unconscious from this, and would have really bad balance for the rest of the week. Hell, even then, he still wouldn't feel well. Only Naruto Uzumaki would know how Gekko Hayate feels right now. Only then did a scream of a man getting the snot beat through him, reach the ears of those in the room. It sounded as if it was from the direction of the lady's hot springs. The four in the room paid no heed to it, outside the Hokage's office, a small girl of five with dark indigo hair and white eyes was standing, waiting for her father to call her in. She was wondering what was going on. The door opened, and out stepped, oh, my, it's that boy from a month ago, the one who stood up for her. Flashback. Sitting in the park, the girl was alone because her dad had to talk with someone else secretly. Clan business. Of course, naturally, this is where the bullies come in, as they walked up to her with humor in their eyes. Hey look, it's a white-eyed freak. How are ya, doin', blind girl? Can you see what I'm doin'? He asked, as he mooned her, simply to upset her. It worked, she flinched away, not wanting to see what he had under those pants. It was bad cooties. This caused the three boys to laugh. One then decided to pick up some dirt from the ground, and threw it at her. Hard. The reaction of trying to move away didn't help the matter that she was defenseless, 
and the boys laughed, going over to her to rub the fact of her weakness in. They were stopped by a blonde boy with whisker marks on his cheeks and blue eyes. One fact of difference. He was five, but he was taller than the three boys. They all stood at three feet. He stood at four foot three. Hanada was two foot nine. That didn't stop them, however. This was the kid from the orphanage who was always sick. He would be easy to handle. Get out of the way, sickly. The lead boy said. No, the blonde answered. What? You want us to hurt you again, said the one on the leader's left. Do whatever you want with me, just don't hurt her, the blonde replied. Okay, guys, you hurt him. Hurt him, but not his girlfriend, the one on the right said. They then proceeded to beat on him, having no idea that he would be known as the angel of death in the future. This was witnessed by several other kids, including a pink-haired girl sitting next to a blonde girl with a ponytail. They were rooted to the spot as they saw this happen. They would tell their parents of this event later that night, and the village would change their view on the boy, if only minutely. Ah, damn, this just got boring, guys. Let's go do something else, eh? The lead bully said, walking off and leaving a beaten blonde boy on the ground. Said boy got up when the three had left, and walked over to the Hyuga princess. He held out a hand. Hi, I'm N Naruto Uzumaki. I hope you're okay. He introduced himself, stuttering slightly as he flinched from the pain. The girl blushed for the boy who had saved her, and meekly took his hand with a supreme shyness that only her kind of character could ever reach. She stuttered. H H Hinata, H Hyuga, T H thank you. She tried to look into his eyes, and saw, in her mind, the most beautiful cerulean orbs she had ever looked upon. Naruto was still wondering why he liked her lavender pupilless eyes his gaze making the girl blush more, but never followed through on that thought as Hiyashi turned the corner. Naruto knew he was the girl's dad, with his looks and all, despite the fact that he even almost looked feminine, but there was that other problem too. Parents never generally liked him talking to their kids, despite the fact they were all the same age. Sorry, gotta run, he stated, and ran fast away, as if he was never beaten upon. He was gone in three seconds, but Hiyashi knew who the kid was. He was thinking that he should bring it up in that month's council meeting. But then again, Hanada didn't know that his dad had been thinking that. She was unconscious at the time with a smile on her red and badly blushing face. Of course, her dad was also walking out of the office with the boy, only to state. Hanada chan, you can wait out here a little longer, we have some more things to discuss before we talk of your situation, he stated, before walking back into the office. Both Naruto and Hanada stayed outside the office, not saying a thing. You um, N Naruto san, okay. Well, that silence just went out the window. Hanada meekly tried to get the boy's attention, she got it, she blushed. Yeah, Hanada? He asked, obviously still not using suffixes. He never was taught it much, having not many people to talk to. He was currently looking her way, causing her to blush more. She continued, thth. Thank you F for L last month, she said, still slightly upset that it took her a whole month to give her thanks. Naruto looked at her dumbly for a moment, until recognition hit him. Wait, you're that girl that the bullies tried to pick on. Don't sweat it, it was nothing, he then said with his hands behind his head and a foxy smile upon his face. He had no idea how close he was to making the poor girl faint. It was a good thing she had a seat to hold on to. It was a good thing that they were both sitting on seats in the first place. So the two sat next to each other for five minutes more, not saying much, not until she said, M my B birthday I is tomorrow, with her stutter ever present. Cool, Naruto replied, happy birthday for then, are you throwing a party? You um, I l live in the H Hyuga E estates, w we don't throw P parties, she said, despite the heavy amount that she wanted one. Well. I think I'll visit anyway to wish you a happy birthday for then, he said, without knowing where she lived. He would find out anyway. Why? She told him exactly three seconds before he or she called her in. He had started to remember things clearly ever since seven months prior to that moment in time. He remembered where she lived, and he would not be able to forget it. This information would prove useful the next day, but he had no idea that it would be. He got up and left, clutching the scroll that the old man had given him. It was more of those fun shinobi puzzles he had. He had noted that it had books in it as well, however, 
but that probably meant he would have to read those books to understand the puzzles more when he did them. Naruto sat upon his bed, still slightly in pain from the stomach ordeal, and his neck had this odd pain in it, but he didn't care. He had just had some dinner at some place, and the food tasted odd. He still wasn't sure why it was free, but it didn't matter, he was hungry. He had no idea that someone had tried to feed him poisoned meat, and not just any meat, but fox meat. Feed the demon fox some of its own kin. Naruto had no idea about that, but he did suddenly have some memories that taught him how to hunt as a fox, he didn't know why. Well, might as well have some fun, he thought, getting the scroll out and unsealing its contents. Even five-year-old kids knew that trick, Naruto getting the hang of it at four, because that's how the Sandame sent stuff after he learned it. There were some books on stuff called Chakra, some others on ninja tactics, and yet others still on various other things. He decided that the book on tactics would be the better choice to read first. The books with the puzzles and problems to solve were also situated in the pile, he got to reading. He finished the first book within the first night, but found he needed to sleep immediately. Why? Because it was very late, now. Kids don't stay up this late. Not the late when the sun is going to rise in half an hour. He slept, late into the next day. Only then was he informed of his new abilities, of a poison-proof secondary stomach, and the fact that he could, learn by eating, with the other. He then learned what he did from the survival muscle memory that the fox held. The two groups met in the courtyard. Both had their escorts. Both had their child. Two men stepped toward each other, their kids following. Hiyashi looked to his brother, Hazashi. One, the head of the main branch. The other, the head of the side branch. Hazashi kun, it is time to place the seal upon your son, Neji. Both men didn't want to do this, but tradition was tradition. Neji saw the shy girl behind the clan head, hey, dad, she looks cute. At least that comment brought a smile to both their faces. Neji kun, she is your cousin, Hanada sama, Hazashi stated to his son. Half an hour later, the boy had a seal upon his head, surrounded by bandages. He was now a caged bird of the Hyuga clan. And hating it. Naruto awoke to a memory of him promising to visit Hinata for her birthday. What time was it? Looking to his clock, he cursed words that five year old kids should not know. He heard them directed at him enough. He bookmarked the book he was reading, and got up, going through his morning routine despite the fact that the clock stated that it was three in the afternoon. He had missed the representative from Cloud visiting the village for the alliance meeting, and was actually headed for the Hyuga estates fast. He found, naturally, that the guards would not let him in. So what did he do? He decided that finding a different way in would be the best bet. He had read the first book of ninja tactics just the other night, and was enlightened to the fact that it didn't matter what ninjutsu one knew, no matter how powerful, would matter. What mattered was how one used them, if they had them. All Naruto would be able to use here would be primitive traps and such. But that didn't stop Naruto. Actually, he might give the guards a little present before he got into the compound. Three hours later, the two Hyuga guards stood at the gate, drenched in water from who knows where. They never saw who did it to them. Naruto decided to find a way in, away from the guards. Later that night, he still hadn't thought of a way in. He decided that he might just try and get a hold of her later in the week where he could tell her that he was sorry for being unable to tell her on the day. As he walked away from his spot, he passed a man with a cloth over the lower half of his face. He had a headband on his head. It was a cloud headband. Was he the ambassador from cloud? Whoever he was, Naruto knew the guy was up to no good. Why? People can tell such things from the eyes someone shows. You know when someone is about to kill you when you see that particular glint in their eyes. That, and there was this odd voice in his head that told him to follow the man. It was just through pure luck that the cloud ninja had not noticed Naruto at all. The boy followed. Hanada was slightly upset that the kind boy she had met the other day had not shown. Although, maybe he couldn't go past the guards. Yeah, that had to be it. The boy seemed sincere enough that he would not lie. She even told him what window her room had. She heard a knock at the window. Was it him? She went over to the window, and opened it. Enneru mhhhhph, instead, she was met with a man with a cloud headband. He was kidnapping her. She found herself gagged before she even finished the boy's name. Naruto found her window, and found her room empty. Maybe she wasn't there yet. Or, 
Maybe she had started looking for him. Who was that in the distance with A, with Hanada gagged over his shoulder? No, he bellowed as he ran, alerting the clan to a danger. Jukogi Kumoka was having the time of his life, kidnapping little girls of the Hyuga clan. Now that was a fun thing. He could have gone for the one-year-old, but she was being watched by her mother. The heiress was the next best thing. So, why did that kid have to follow? He didn't know, he didn't care, but he would kill the brat. He was a witness. Turning and stopping, the man threw the girl to the ground, causing the boy to turn angry. Hey, what are you doing with Hanada-chan? The blonde boy asked. The man smiled before drawing his special blade. It was a soul-binding blade. He didn't know that the blade would change things for the future. Well, I'm taking this here girl to my village. We want her eyes. If not, then at least we can have fun with her body. He answered, a lecherous grin forming as he finished. Naruto may have not really known what the man had really meant, but it still made him more angry. He charged, and was thrown back as the man kicked him away. Oh, ouch, that kid's bones are like steel. What the, the man thought, seeing as the boy was getting up again. He could tell that, in the distance, there was a Hyuga approaching at high speeds. It was Hiyashi Hyuga, clan head of the Hyuga clan, and father of the girl he was trying to kidnap. That changed things. Now, it was a, kill the target, mission. He turned on the girl, and made to stab at her, the boy showing more lack of safety than the man would care to admit. Naruto Uzumaki threw himself in the way of the sword, and the blade went straight through him. He didn't even know why he did it. Too bad he was not enough, as the sword pushed him back further, and into Hanada. Both kids skewered upon the sword that the man found he could not remove easily. Eventually, after a few seconds, he did. Too bad this was followed soon after by the man falling to the floor, dead. Hiyashi Hayuga stood there, looking upon the two once skewered children. There were many thoughts going through his mind at this point. The Sandame and Hiyashi's wife weren't going to be happy. A tear went down the father's cheek. Hiyashi Hayuga wanted revenge on Cloud. It was that obvious to the Hokage and his medical escort when they arrived. Thirty seconds later, and the two children were on their way to the Ur department in the hospital. They weren't dead, yet. Kill the heretic, burn the traitor, exterminate the Zeno. Most common words out of the mouth of an Inquisitor, Adeptus Astarted, Grey Knight and or Sister of Battle. This is also common aming Imperial priests who are zealot wannabes. Last time, Naruto was slowly gaining the properties of an Astarte's adept, and Hinata was suddenly kidnapped by the cloud. Naruto intervened, but now the two children have been skewered upon the same sword. They were close to death. The Ur room was a mess. Both patients were upon tables, but only one was being attended to. The other was lying there, ignored. They didn't want to help the demon. They were trying to save the heiress to the Hyuga clan. The needed equipment was not near enough to the room, and even then, the demand for it just would not work. Apparently some other old money tycoon saw his life as better. It was good that one of these two kids had a tenant to take care of things. But there was one minor catch. The doctors, surgeons and medic nins found that there was a slight chakra trail between the two, like a constant, unbreakable connection. This was causing many troubles. One child was safe for the most part but the other was not. One child was going to live, while the other had a very high chance of dying. The only problem with this was that there was a connection between the two. If one died, so did the other. They may be in different bodies, but now their souls were connected in the most mysterious ways. The other problem with this, the one that was safe, had a nine-tailed fox sealed within him. Of course, this turned into a mixed blessing when the one at risk of dying suddenly started to heal like the safe one. Short answer, Kayubi just saved Hinata's life with his chakra that he could give her. Serutobi and Hiyashi sat in the Hokage's office, the security seal upon the room. Hinata and Naruto were on two separate beds in the corner. Both were unconscious. Hiyashi-kun, you do know this means I have to put them both on the same team. Of course, Hokage-sama, I understand that, and the fact that my daughter has a major crush on Uzumaki-san over there. In fact, now she has a connection with the damned Kayubi, too. Although, 
the connection doesn't seem to show any proximity properties. So placement upon the same team might not be necessary. Sarutobi chuckled. Well, about time someone actually cared for him. I say, air, who else is going to show kindness to the boy? Hiyashi thought for a moment. You. Sandime chuckled, for five seconds before replying with, I won't be around forever. Hiyashi kun, I'm too old. True, true, whatever that sword did to cause it is now irrelevant. My daughter's fate is now tied with Uzumaki Sans. You have my vote in favor of the boy's life. Tell me, is it a bloodline? Hiyashi went for a monologue. The Sandame shook his head, lighting a smoke. Actually, I have not the slightest clue as to what it is. Maybe the Kayubi does not want to be in a weak container, and is therefore altering poor Naruto in the more painful ways so that the boy is stronger. I still have no idea, not even my doctor can tell and he was trained by my old student, too. Actually, Serutobi can get the bigger monologues than anyone. Orochimaru sneezed, that wasn't good, that meant that someone was getting better monologues than him. He would make them pay, that kid, Naruto, was actually the inspiration for some of his more, insane experiments. Naruto woke up, and was in pain, yet again. He didn't want the sword to go through him, actually, he was trying to deflect it away by palming the flat side away. Of course, his balance had to screw up, and now he's, in heaven. There was this pretty lady beside him, he had, seen her before, actually. H. Hanada Chan, he meekly asked, still hurting from the changes in his body, and the sword wound. It wasn't there, physically, but there was suddenly something else there. Hanada, of course, heard Naruto, but continued to sleep. In fact, she cuddled into the boy, despite how much blushing was happening with the boy. Wasn't there a thing called cooties? He didn't want cooties. Serutobi and Hiyashi just laughed at the display, alerting Naruto to their presence, and Hinata to the land of the conscious. She went back to the land of Nod as soon as she realized what had happened and what she had been doing. Luckily, Naruto was able to slip out of her unconscious choke hold she had on him, and walk over to the two grown-ups. Hey, old man, Hyuga-san, um, what happened? He asked. Hiyashi and Serutobi shared a look, and decided to explain what had happened, leaving out the fact that he and Hinata were connected, or the fact that he had a tenant that saved her life. Actually, they had to leave out several other secrets about Hinata as well, the ones that they would have to tell Hinata later, and not the boy. Because they were as secret as Naruto's. Naruto would question those plot holes later. Sitting in his cage, the Kayubi looked on at the hole on the other side of the room outside the bars. It leads somewhere else. Where else? Most probably that Hyuga girl's mindscape, actually. Why was he feeling the presence of something else, though? Something, similar, yet opposite. He could hear the arithmetic beating of his own tenant's two hearts, and the beating of the girl's. This would make things, interesting. It was five days since the ambassador from Cloud had tried to kidnap Hanada. So far, there were too many reasons for war than were comfortable. Actually, the Hokage did really not like where the future was headed. Of course, he had just now heard that the Cloud demanded the body of the one who killed their ambassador, but the Hokage stated. If you send your men in with intent to kidnap and or kill our people, of course your men are going to die. Next time, actually follow your own words. He had stated this to the Rakage himself, in the presence of the other cages during the Great Council of Cages. This got the desired result, many other cages raising their eyebrows at the man in curiosity and thoughtfulness. Should they ever trust the Cloud's leader, who seems to like to deceive everyone? To think that the Hyuga clan was about to sacrifice their own clan head's twin for that. The Hokage never gave them a chance. If it was only one civilian, then it would not have concerned him. But two, one of those secretly being a demon container, then there were issues that the Hokage had a right, no, a responsibility to step up to. But if that damned rakage would just stop being so damn stubborn about it all, then the whole situation could have been avoided when he tried to strike the Hokage. Now the whole cloud village had to get another rakage, and he has to attend the council summit of cages when the new guy is introduced to the other cages. Basically, it is going to be a paperwork nightmare for him and his fellow cages in arms. 
It was a good thing that Naruto was able to read and absorb the information in those ninja handbooks, because he was quite sure he might have to enroll Naruto into the academy much earlier. Despite how much he didn't want to do it, getting that boy into the shinobi ranks was going to be necessary. One was because the Cloud Village might find out who had slowed the ambassador down, for Hiyashi to kill him. Also, the civilian council was unable to have any sway over a ninja. The other was because he needed more ninja in the ranks for the coming war he simply knew was going to take place. Not necessarily with Cloud, but some other force. Someone he could remember, sitting in his home, upon his couch, Naruto Uzumaki read his books. If he was going to solve these hard puzzles the old man gave him, then he would have to read these things, cover to cover. Why? When he had tried the puzzles, he found how hard they were. Very hard. It was simply an interactive map with many selections, upon a scroll. Actually, it was a very big scroll. One of those huge ceiling scrolls utilizing Genjutsu and Ninjutsu to make an interactive training instrument. Then again, Naruto only understood half of it. Plus, whoever this Jiraiya character was, he must have been a crackerjack genius to invent this with some other guy called the fourth Hokage. The third had told him to try and solve the puzzle, which was a few too many chess games, really, just really advanced, almost real, chess games on a 2D screen. He could not see the genjutsu that hid the, Anbu strategy test, tag on the edge. But he did see that the thing was called, scroll. Naruto was quite sure this would take a while to complete. Taking a look at his clock on the wall, he saw what time it was. 11.34 PM. Well, he had the night to do all that in, maybe he should just, ouch. He suddenly screamed, having just started to writhe in pain again. He was now suddenly finding it hard to breathe, something that had been happening for a few days, now. More of the organs within his body were growing, and the poor boy had a long way to go before they stopped. Seeing as it wasn't anything new to him, despite the pain he was in, he decided to get back to Reading. Six months later, the Shinobi team was outside the gates. Shinobi 1 led the way, Shinobi 2, 3 and 4 staying behind him. Shinobi 1 was the leader type, equal in all three areas of combat. Gen, Tai and Ninjutsu. He was dressed and outfitted for tactical measures. Shinobi 2 was a pure Taijutsu type. He was also armed to the teeth with explosive notes, blades, and other weapons. Shinobi 3 was the Genjutsu type currently casting the stealth jutsu so the group wasn't detected. He was outfitted in full stealth gear, with only one blade he was proficient in. And Shinobi 4 was a heavy ninjutsu type, his head ready to call up any number of overpowered jutsu to attack or defend, and to support his teammates. Like the taijutsu type, he was armed to the teeth with explosive notes and tools. He could lay a trap at a moment's notice. They had to get past the walls, get a scroll, get out, and not die. Not being detected would help in that, but wasn't mandatory. Five minutes later, they were dead, having been ambushed badly by the ninja on the other side. Naruto Uzumaki swore in anger, having just failed to beat the thing again. In all actual fact, the big scroll was a test. A test that reset itself every time there was a failure, so there was no repetitiveness. It was a hard thing to do. Managing a squad was incredibly hard. Then there was managing things like where the ambush points could be, and the strategic advantages. Format of control was easy, complexity of the elements was hard. Naruto had been trying the thing for almost a year. Maybe he should tell the Hokage this. Just what kind of test was this? And his eyes and ears are killing him, they hurt too much. He got up, and found that the world was moving of its own accord, opposite the way he was going. He hit the floor, dizzy. Sitting at his desk, the Hokage had a content smile upon his face. Why? He had, finally, gotten rid of all the paperwork upon his desk. And Naruto Uzumaki walked into his office, looking like he had a major balance problem. Okay, so he was swaying from side to side, using the wall to hold himself up. The current, additions, were addling his balance and sight. He held the scroll in his hands. The one the Sandame was testing the boy with. This thing is impossible, he stated, as he found the seat at the Hokage's desk. Now, Naruto, don't jump to too many conclusions. Let me see that, he asked, 
and caught the scroll that Naruto tried to throw at him. The aim was surprisingly good for someone with a very serious middle ear problem. Sarutobi opened the scroll and checked the results area, an ill-checked area, by his guess. The score was incredible, not many people lasted 5 minutes in the game, and if Naruto kept playing at it, he might actually be able to beat it. The trick was the puzzle was not meant to be solved. Not unless you were a ninja with experience, or a Nara. This simply hardened Sarutobi's resolve about Naruto's future. Naruto, how much have you actually wanted to become a shinobi? He asked. The result was an amused Naruto sitting back in his chair, smirking and raising an eyebrow. Old man, do you even find it necessary to ask if I wanna, be one? I'll be in your seat when I'm done. The boy replied. This caused the Hokage to start laughing. It's a good thing that I enrolled you into next year's roster for the Ninja Academy, then. This caused Naruto to stand up, and drop his jaw onto the ground. Of course, he hit the floor hard as soon as he lost balance, precisely half a second after standing. Naruto crawled back into his seat. And what of the things I need? He asked, now holding onto the chair until the room stopped spinning. Sarutobi chuckled at the look upon Naruto's face, they are provided by the school if you are unable to get any yourself. They have to provide it to all their students, if necessary. Oh, Naruto replied, and was given his scroll and left with a wave. Now the boy would become a ninja, but the journey of becoming one was a whole story in its own right, then again, he had to survive a birthday or two before that. Not sleeping, the boy was awake. He had been for the last three and a half days. Why, it was the Kayubi festival, of course, and their annual fox hunt. Fun, yes. It wasn't however, when people kept thinking you wear a fox, because of whisker marks on your cheeks. He knew they wear ninja, and that they wear toying with him. He knew they were waiting for him to go to sleep, so they could kill him. He knew they had led him out to this forest for that reason alone. Naruto Uzumaki was being hunted like a fox, and the hunters were getting tired. They had no idea that Naruto knew how to fight the effects of sleep with the enhancements he had. Actually, they also didn't know that the boy had good night vision, or could breathe underwater for a greater period of time more than them. Actually, they only thought the boy was a weak, sickly thing, not even considered human. Right now, they were setting up shifts. Naruto moved through the forest trying to find a way back to the village. He had just turned six. He was also finding things hard to deal with, having a massive headache. Only recently, he had regained his balance, and his eyes didn't hurt so much, but now he had a massive headache. In a few months, he'd be starting at the academy. But why were there some ninja that didn't want him to become one? In actual fact, they had been peppering him with sharp things, explosions, and other increasingly difficult situations. Right now, Naruto was scared, and scarred. Actually, this almost happened one other year, when someone had tried to set him on fire, but it was found out before it could cause damage. Naruto could only hope that the Hokage could figure out where he had gone. Boom. The sound came from the west. Naruto went north. Luckily, he had set some sort of wire trap on the ground, near a tree. Why? To trip them, and so they land onto the tree. Sound plan. But when the ninja that arrived saw the thing, he jumped over the wire, into the tree. Okay, so it was still a sound plan. Actually, it was quite productive. Even with the massive headache he had, Naruto couldn't help but chuckle at what had happened. Even as the man hit the ground with a thud and a groan of pain, it just got funnier. Naruto used this time to find the way out, having just nicked one of the sharp things from the man. A sword. It was a very dangerous forest. Actually, he just heard something roar. He doubled his efforts on getting out. He was met by several tigers, actually. 3. Not something a six-year-old wants to find, alone, in a scary forest with people trying to kill him. The first of the three, Kitty, as we'll call him, launched himself at the boy, intent on being the one to make the kill. Naruto found the world as a slow place as he dodged to the left, and rolled. He got back up, and realized that he would have to kill Kitty to live. Her, as we'll call the second tiger, launched next, seeing as his friend failed. Naruto hit the dirt, and the tiger went straight over him. The last tiger, three, as we shall call it, 
then pounced, and actually tackled Naruto. Blood was spilt, it was the tiger's blood. Naruto had jammed the blade into the chest of the beast, letting its blood spill out of the hole that was the way to its heart. After Purr and Kitty found out what had just happened, they both circled the boy, ready to use teamwork to take down a greater foe. Naruto noted this, everything seems to be based on teamwork. One of the tigers went for his chest, the other for his legs. Naruto only then realized that he was about to get hurt, no matter what he did. He decided to drop low, and swing at the low-aiming feline. The tigers met the boy, one sailing over the other two, as they rolled and then remained still. Kitty approached Purr, wondering if the idiot actually got hurt in that. The boy got up, he had practically done the same thing, but also taking off one of the arms of the beast. Kitty bolted, but not because of the greater foe of the boy, but because of the greater foe behind him. Naruto was hungry, but heard another growl behind him. Scared to look, he glanced anyway, at the great dire wolf behind him. Sure, the boy was covered in blood, but the wolf's muzzle practically was crusted in the stuff. It was a lone wolf, a survivor. It growled, like a killer. It was a brute. Naruto was scared, the wolf seemed to smell the fear. Only then did Naruto realize something. This was only one large and deadly wolf, when he had been attacked by mobs of villagers, teams of ninja and just now, a pack of tigers. One lone wolf is not going to be a problem. Plus, Naruto was hungry. The wolf never knew it had a sword shoved up its jaw and into its brain. Naruto had fun eating a part of the beast, and a part of the tigers as well. He didn't need to eat the whole bodies of the things, just enough to feed him. His second stomach would take care of the fact that he had not cooked the meat. Now he had more survival ideas on what to do in the forest thanks to the wolf and tigers. He already had the instincts of a fox. Naruto then realized one thing. He needed a shower. He needed to find his way home. It was dark already. Two days later, Naruto found his way back into the village. The Hokage greeted him at the edge of the forest. He saw the sword, and knew what it was really from. Naruto's first kill was a tiger. It still wouldn't fortify him enough for his first human kill, though, at least it wasn't any of the three ninja that he had apprehended two hours ago. That would have been a handful to explain. Now how the hell did Naruto learn survival instincts from eating? Naruto explained, telling the Hokage exactly what was going on with his body and mind, like a child tells their dad how they did a bike jump, but without the exaggeration kids are so prone to adding. Naruto didn't need to exaggerate. It was all true, fact being there to back it up. He slept well that night, despite the weird dreams that taught him things about his body. It was the new year, actually, it had been for a month already. Right now, Naruto Uzumaki was waiting outside the academy building with some other students. Some kids were already taking the entrance exams, like the ones at his age, only they wouldn't enroll until a few years later. Naruto was personally selected by the Hokage, so there was no argument there. It was something to do with certain circumstances and natural ability that was pre-tested at an earlier age. Right now, he was 7. In 6 years, he would be 13, the usual age for becoming a genin. If he passed this, he would be 1 at 11. Too bad he wouldn't beat the record of the Hitaki genius, Kakashi. He was waiting with kids older than him who were going to start learning the ways of the ninja, like him. He looked back over at the kids going for the entrance exams. He saw Hanada. For a moment, he thought he felt something, but the thought was quickly put to the back of his mind as the teacher walked over to the waiting line of students. It was some gray-haired old shinobi, who looked like he had retired, but was fit for teaching. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to the Konoha Ninja Academy. I am Kenzo Fujisai. Kenzo sensei will do from all of you, he greeted, in a gruff and weathered voice. He then motioned for all the students to follow. Hanada watched as the new students walked into the building, seeing Naruto in the group. He almost could have been mistaken as being of the right age to be in that class. Ever since that fateful day, when she was five, she could not get that blonde's face out of her head. She could not get his smile out of her hearts. The class was inside of the classroom and the teacher was currently performing a lecture on history about the shinobi nations. This didn't help Naruto's headache any. Actually, it had gotten worse. 
The fact that he could hear every word clearly and remember it all, but have a pike shoved into one's skull and then twisted at the same time was what Naruto was living. He had already noted the curriculum of the year, with what would happen in the class. They were going to have a taijutsu tournament tomorrow, to see where everyone was at, but most of the work was going to be theory. Hell, they were going for a mass mental test tomorrow as well, to see where everyone stood on the need for memory games list. Naruto would be placed last, not because of prejudice, but because of ability. A sudden development of photographic memory at the age of four does that. At least the yearly survival camp near the end of the year looked promising. Much better than hearing about how the fourth won the third shinobi war. The next day, right now, Naruto was having little difficulty in the department of looking tough. He was stocky enough. He was also tall enough. This wasn't helped any in the fact that he carried himself as if he had no worries, but could act on a moment's notice, like a hunting animal. But when it came to actual taijutsu, Naruto was pathetic. As in, he had no form. What he did, was act like an animal, and, bull rush, his opponent, after circling his opponent a little to gauge him. The strategy did work most of the time, with his physique, until one of the clan members fought him. They actually had taijutsu skills. Naruto didn't. Also, they didn't have massive migraines, the size of the Hokage monument. Naturally, Naruto's taijutsu was marked as poor. The mental tests were a breeze, though, he already did those when he was four, maybe five. Oh well, he had a large part of the year to get though. Again, he needed to get bigger clothes. It was six months into the school year. Naruto had not made a single friend in this time, whatsoever. Okay, there was one that was close, but then again, the kid didn't seem to be there, much. Actually, Shino Aburame didn't seem to react to anything at all. At least he was one kid that was the same age as him. But right now, that kid was in the garden, currently chasing some sort of bug that eluded Naruto's knowledge. The kid was a bug nut. That came with being an Aburame. Naruto, however, was sitting on a bench in the playground, minding his own business as he ate the lunch he had prepared earlier that morning. Ramen. He had a grey long-sleeved shirt under an orange t-shirt, with long pants down to his lower legs, all baggy and black. Naturally, this is where the bully treatment comes into play, three boys walking up to Naruto. Actually, it was the three boys who beat up Naruto in place of Hinata. Her face flashed upon his conscience, no discernible reason in Naruto's mind. This was followed by a rock splashing into his ramen, pouring hot and scalding ramen onto Naruto. It hurt, a lot. Then again, Naruto was used to pain. But they would pay for ruining his ramen. Um, mind telling me why you guys just ruined my lunch? He asked. The lead boy, a red head with a scar over his left cheek, said this. You call that a lunch, sickly. If it was shown that Naruto was annoyed, then it was so. His eyebrow twitched. That was all they needed. The boy on the right, a short Inazuka boy, who was of non-air material, smiled. Hey, he now smells a bit. Fun, he smells B-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-D. Also something that was now harming the boy's control on the object called, temper. The third was a black-haired boy, of no clan. Nondescript and everything, the perfect person to send in, for he has an easily forgettable face. Well, let's just go clean him up, now, eh? He said, before he and the Inazuka sprang to life instantaneously at the same time. Both had Naruto by the arms, and were dragging him to the nearby pond. Both were older than him, and were also just that little bit stronger. Naruto was good at the physical conditioning, but the teachers kept pulling him out despite protest that he was still able to work. It's great when you have to follow your teacher's orders, like when they tell you to go and report to the main office for bad behavior. But there were no teachers here, and Naruto wasn't that happy right now. Actually, that was also aided by the fact that he had a massive headache. As soon as he hit the water, he snapped. First, he would spook them, by staying under the water for a few more minutes than necessary. The kids just stared at him for those minutes, wondering if they had just killed the kid. Seeing as their parents kept telling them to keep away from the boy who could supposedly eat their souls, it might have not been a bad thing. As soon as they turned away, however, Naruto came up from the pond, 
fast, and pulled both of the two kids who threw him into the water, into the same pond by the necks of their shirts. Naruto's clothes were already soaked, and now these two had the same dilemma. The angered blonde turned to the redhead, who was currently surprised at the blonde's long breath ability. Naruto smiled. You want to join your friends? Or should I make you? He wasn't using a happy smile, but more of a, you are so screwed if you don't jump in with them. Smile. Naturally, the boy jumped in, causing the other students to wonder at what had just happened. All they saw was Naruto walk away, completely soaked from head to toe, and the other three bullies getting out of the water, two still spurting water from the sudden and shocking entrance into the water. The fact that it was summer only made the students think that they all went for a swim. Naruto went and got his bag, glad that he always brought another change of clothes with him, and that the idiot kids didn't throw in the bag, too. Shino walked out of the bushes, having just observed enough. Naruto had many secrets, now Shino was interested. He, held the same face he always does, as an Aburame, no smile at all. Damn that Jedi Akamaru, Ryo Inazuka and Keji Makuke. They always had to ruin a day, and clothes. Naruto laughed at how stupid that just sounded. His head still hurt, badly. The teacher looked on, and then said, Now, Yumino-san, you see what I have as a student. It doesn't help when all the kids have been told by their parents to stay away from the child, or cause him pain. The young and new Chunin with brown hair and a scar on his nose looked up at the man. So, they actually let the brat into the school system. Does he count as human? The older man hung his head. It would take a lot to get this boy into enough of an unbiased teacher shape that was necessary, or the poor teen would not become a teacher. Perhaps he might change on one of the survival camps that were arriving soon. Kenzo regretted ever thinking those words, as he was waiting with the rest of the class at the academy gathering grounds. Right now, the kids were all waiting, but keeping a distance from poor Uzumaki-san, although, the teacher was not going to show anything for the kid, because he showed nothing for any of them, in their eyes. Amusingly enough, some of the kids were even using teamwork as a rule to form a sort of makeshift, prisoner escort, formation around Naruto, as if to protect the other kids from him, like he was a monster. The man had a feeling that a certain law was not followed to the letter. The big fact was, these kids were of higher grades, as all the students on the camp were currently from all the classes and grades. When there was a survival camp, everyone went. It saved money, manpower, time, and made things safer with numbers. Especially with the training ground that they were headed to. Training Ground 76, the Academy Survival Course. It was famous for always being different, every year. No two years in that course were ever identical at Training Ground 76. And the whole Academy student body was about to find out that fact. The man smiled. He was going to have fun. Naruto Uzumaki was having anything but fun, really. He already knew survival tactics to the point of a seasoned wild animal. Although, all these technical terms for the processes were fun to figure out, seeing as none went out of their way to help him. Actually, he had all the basics, like priorities and the sops of the survival guide already within his head, and figured out, on the third day, and there were four days left. Soon enough, the teachers were going to gather together all the younger students, and have them go on the, adventure runs, as they called them, and that would be fun to do. Hey! It was explained in the brochure that all the students got before camp, and Naruto memorized the whole thing in five minutes, in a fit of boredom. He would have gone prank spree upon the teachers, but then again, they controlled the game out in this forest, partly why Naruto was bored right now was because the teachers near him had decided it would be fun if nothing happened at all wherever he was. All first years, over here, Kenzo bellowed, which was a surprisingly possible feat for the old man. So what did Naruto do? He went and followed, bringing his little travel pack that all students were given. They were not allowed to bring anything, just anything medically needed, even then, not many students that had such necessities were even considered in the entrance exam, so none brought anything except the girls and guys with differing fashion statements. Naturally, Naruto had no fashion statement right now, and was, like other students, wearing the camo green jumpsuit with the Konoha symbol over its left shoulder. The backpack held the usual, ration packs that counted as breakfast, lunch and dinner. It only lasted for three days. 
The students were on a survival exercise for crying out loud. Enough water for four days. They had to find their own source at a certain point. Bed roll. For sleeping in. Anyone can carry one. Covert tent that could be camouflaged into the ground in certain places. It was obvious why they had this. Mug, plate, spoon, chopsticks x2, knife and fork. Necessary to eat with, unless one liked to use their hands. A medical kit for first aid. Only the higher year students knew how to use these, and the general rule of thumb was that if you were injured, the one using first aid has to use your med kit. It saved for supply factors, and was convenient. This was for when people had accidents. Now, back to the matter at hand, Naruto had managed to save the ration packs by substituting them with some other meals, in the forms of some rabbit he caught one night when the teachers weren't looking. That was tasty, or was it just the instincts of the fox he ate years ago, speaking? Well either case, survival in the wild was a simple kill or be killed situation. Morality over bunnies compared to fish did not matter. Besides, his stomach could handle almost anything that was thrown at it, anyway. The teacher looked at Naruto, who had been walking over at his own pace, for the past 30 seconds. He wondered if Kenzo-sama would mind if he went and gave the boy some motivation. Hurry up or I throw a kanai at you. We have much to get done, slow poke. Naruto only sped up a little bit, but reached the class. Kenzo smiled a little, good thing the threat had not been followed through, or the old man would have more paperwork at his table. The Hokage saw at his desk, and suddenly felt a pang of dread upon the air, almost as if someone had suddenly cried out, paperwork, and that it would be at his table. Sarutobi shivered, someone just thought of dreaded paperwork. Probably Guy, he was that weird. The plan was simple enough. Go and visit each site taking notes of each location as one travels, and get back to the camp before the time is up. The fact that none had opted to mention teamwork meant that Naruto was left alone. The teachers would be at each site, and would see that each student had found each location by confirming their arrival to each site. Each student was given a map with locations, but no forest and a simple, you are here, pointer. The teachers may have not selected teamwork, but already, the students gathered into their respective groups. Okay. So Naruto would not be alone. Shino Aburame, the only other kid his age there, was also with him, simply by age. Although, admittedly, Shino would rather try and discover the secrets of the Uzumaki than anything else, as it just was no logical, some of the things the id could pull. It was partly one of the reasons that he had joined up with the academy. The other was that all Aburame clan members have a tradition. It was to go though the academy for six years, instead of four. By now, the teachers had used their ninja speed to go to each location, awaiting each student to arrive at their locations and take notes. That was the game. The fire jutsu was released into the air. Walking through the forests Naruto realized that the pain in his head was slowly going down, but was still present, he glanced at Shino beside him. Hey, so, Shino, are you going to make any comment? Nothing but the silent padding of feet on the ground as the two walked along. You do know that we need to find a water source soon? Still a silence, until Shino nodded his head. Ah, as always, the talkative one, Aburame-san. Naruto then said in a gruff and obviously put on voice. Constantly. Now be quiet, my hive is disrupted with your voice. That was the first time that Naruto had heard the boy speak since introducing himself in class. Only recently Naruto had learnt that the boy held a hive in his body. Only recently. Shino had found that Naruto did not care about a simple, icky, fact of his hive. The student body's parents had the wrong assumption that the kid was a demon of sorts, with their actions and glares. The boy only had improved abilities of some kind, possibly a bloodline. The two boys arrived next to a body of water, that was good. They refilled their canteens. Three shadows watched the two kids, thinking of the best way to get back at the kid, why? Because these three still remember getting pulled into the water by the blonde boy. Keji kun, Ryo kun, I think we should really give the payback in the extreme, hey? stated Jidai, leaning against the rock they were hiding behind. Kejima and Ryo were both sitting down, thinking. Currently, they were using all their shinobi training to ambush the two and disable the blonde, leaving the bug boy alone. Then Kejima shot his head up, as if he suddenly had an idea. He smiled. 
Naruto and Shino finished refilling their canteens, they would be good for a few more days. Both had not noticed the shadow in the water, thinking it to be just another rock or animal. But when it shot out of the water, pulling Naruto into the river fast, Shino reacted faster than what was thought possible for the clan heir. The two others who had shot out of the surrounding bushes tried to hold the boy back, only to have one of them grab air, and the other grab some bugs. Ah! Ryo screamed, the Inazuka not being accustomed to having chakra bugs draining him. He hit the ground, unconscious. He would be fine. The other guy knew taking on the Aburame would not be a wise thing, and picked up his friend as soon as the bugs had left. All Shino had done was roll out of the way while leaving a swarm of bugs on the ground. As for Naruto, he was wet and soggy, and the boy was holding his head underwater. How do you like it, huh? he asked. It didn't matter to Naruto, who could breathe underwater for a limited amount of time, but still. Was the kid trying to kill him? Release Uzumaki-san, Jidai-san, Shino stated, or I will be forced to knock you out. Jidai looked at the Aburame, like he was crazy for even thinking that was possible, until he saw an unconscious Inazuka being dragged off by Kejima. Okay, he said, lifting Naruto up and throwing him further into the water as he ran off with his friends. At least those three could pass Kakashi's bell test, but none here knew that. Shino walked up to the edge of the waterbank, knowing that Naruto was capable of swimming on his own. Actually, he knew that it was quite hard for Naruto to drown, in the first place, it seemed. Only Naruto knew that it was because he had eaten fish so many times before, and knew the instincts of moving underwater. Naruto got up, fully okay, but drenched from head to toe. It wasn't even the first day, and already the two had been ambushed by higher grade students. By the end of the course, Naruto had been ambushed five times by higher graders who knew of his secret, and wanted to be the ones who took him out. Naturally, none told him of his secret, and also, never succeeded. At one time, curiously enough, one of the students actually stood up for him. Some Uchiha named Itachi. He was to graduate soon. Naruto had a detailed description of all the locations in his book, and had them marked on his map. It was a good thing that all the standard survival packs were all waterproof. Most of the attempts were all aimed at trying to drown him, only one being to try and hit him with an explosive note. But it was insignificant, and had no real explanation. It was there one second, then an explosion followed, Naruto surviving with Shino, and the perpetrators not being found at all. What an interesting, survival, game. Good thing the first year students didn't have to run the course coveredly, like all the other year students. It was nearing the end of the first year, now being October. But that wasn't necessarily a good thing for Naruto. Why? The tenth day of that month was his birthday, the Kayubi festival. Naturally, he had to lay low. Staying at his apartment was not a really good idea, so he decided to go and hang out in the academy survival forests. They were never manned at this time, as it was shifting and changing yet again. It supposedly baffled even the greatest seal master, Minato Namikaze, as to how it did this every year. That was how mysterious the forest was. At least Naruto brought all of the books and those scrolls of his with him. The one called, Scroll, was looking particularly lonely, for some reason. Only one ninja, who had no chakra, and he had to get some information back to his village. Problem was, everyone knew his face, and he now had a massive bounty on his head. The good part was that none knew he had taken any information. He ditched his shinobi clothing, including his headband. That was something that had to be done, not to become a missing nin, but to avoid the eyes of the shinobi present. He set out, finding suitable replacements and a mass amount of bandages to hide his face with. He used it on his arms and chest to make it look like an injury, and set off, getting past the checkpoints by looking like an injured, yet recovering man. There were still questionnaires, and this was getting hard to pass. He reached the fifth checkpoint before some med nin at a checkpoint recognized his face and turned him in. Three days. Longest Naruto had ever lasted, because that was a situation he had to deal with many times. He packed his scroll away, and got up. He had been out in this forest for three days so far, only playing that game. Actually, he didn't even sleep. That has become somewhat of a norm to him, being able to stay awake for long periods of time. It was necessary when most of the village seemed to like to sneak up on the boy when he slept. Well, 
To sneak up on him now would require one to be able to find a very well hidden one man stealth tent in the middle of an ever changing forest. No yelling, no screaming, no unwanted visitors in the dead of night during the celebrations. Although, Naruto was quite sure there were going to be many traps and gifts waiting for him back at the apartment. It was still somewhat satisfying that he had found a silent location with which to stay in for the moment, even if that major headache of his had been getting worse by the second. Naruto decided that actually getting some sleep would be the best course of action. He would return to his apartment after that happened. Most probably, he would learn something else about his body with those weird dreams, again. He climbed into his little tent, zipped it up, and lay down upon the bedroll. He was asleep within seconds. True to word, his mind was bombarded with more weird dreams. In actual fact, he fell asleep for three days, some villagers thought that the demon was dead once they burnt him down. When he returned to the main of Konoha, he found that his apartment was no longer there, this, I seem to have ruined the story with the last four after the last two reviews. Hell, I don't even know how to write, being aggressive. But I guess that I have to start somewhere. Those last four reviews, ouch. Okay, from when I read them, that is, most likely when I post this chapter, there will have been an all manner of unholy events that will have happened in my life to screw up me getting this out. Most likely, a large amount of time will have passed because of it. Disclaimer. I don't own Naruto, or Warhammer 40k, if I did, then people in those worlds would actually be a lot more passive, apparently. About Naruto getting ass handed to him twice by the same three boys. They are older than him, not just first years. If you read the last chapter properly, then you will have noted the fact that the whole school goes on this thing every year, as a whole. The boys who attack Naruto actually know how to use chakra, and have actual taijutsu training. Do they all dish out stuff like that in the first year? Not likely, hell, they had an Inazuka in the group, who knew how to channel chakra into their own body to improve their attack power. Naruto fighting back, and the lack of, if you were poked for, three seconds in the, wound, heals, would you complain? Especially when you have had worse pain, growing, about, named after her mother, I forget to write words, as I write them. It's a problem, I know, and it doesn't go away at all. So sue me for being dumb. Just assume I wrote, his last name was his mother's family name, and we'll forget that ever happened. Serutobi in his work, he is old. He also doesn't know what the hell is gonna happen with the boy whose skeleton seems to grow fast. For all he knows, giving the boy muscle might cause the bones to break out of the skin. Actually, that sounds like a fatality from Mortal Kombat. Itachi, graduating when Naruto is two, last I remember reading in the manga, Sasuke was just beginning to go into the academy when Itachi was in his final year. Wasn't Itachi known first off as the guy who shot through the ranks to Anbu in a year, before murdering his clan? And for me being too scared to make Naruto powerful? Naruto throws a punch at Orochimaru, thus ending the tyranny of the snake Sanin. Oh pedness like this sucks, but if you all really need it, then why the hell doesn't Naruto just, hum? Rewrites the whole ing story again, asterisk how's that for aggressive? Sorry about that, I snapped for no apparent reason and was contemplating leaving FF altogether. Blame that ninja death T user. Never should have told him in RL what my FF name was, call him douchebag. He calls it to everyone else in RL. Who the cares if I am a bad story planner, or thinker, or too ing passive for my own ing good. Ops, snapped again. I can almost see the spaces being eaten up again by the upload and publishing process as I write this, too. I add the spaces, but they disappear once I'm gone. I guess I'll just have to take away most of the canon shit that is around, because without canon, where the hell is the original story plot that makes the whole thing awesome in the first place, might as well go and rename the characters and make my own story and place it in 40k instead, eh. Snapped for a third time, okay. I might have a problem here. Ending author's notes, before I get scary. Peas. The codex I have for the implants is one of the additions of, chapter approved. Which happened to have the process of becoming a space marine within it. And, oh, I have a very funny omake I have to share with you all. Guy, the hero of Konoha, Kayubi's bane. As the Kayubi set forth against the village, 
the fourth Hokage looked across to his trusted ninja, all of them. Amongst them, Maida Gai stood at the ready, a thumbs up aimed at the young Hokage. Look, Gai, save it for Kayubi, okay? The fourth said. With uttermost pleasure, my most youthful Hokage, I shall show the Kayubi my fires of youth. Somehow, that one event changed things beyond recognition, as when the battle against the Kayubi came to pass, the Hokage was preparing the Shiki Fuan, when Maida Gai came out of the foliage and charged at the Kayubi. The fires of youth shine brightly in me, he shouted at the top of his lungs, tears coming out of his eyes as a sunset with a crashing wave appeared behind him while he gave the Kayubi a thumbs up. The shine on his teeth, as he smiled, blinded the Kayubi, and it roared in mental pain, as the Kayubi simply erased its own chakra, in order to get away from such an awful sight. Therefore, Maida Gai became the new hero of Konoha, having defeated the Kayubi no Kitsune, an entirely dangerous chakra entity, a force of nature itself, with a simple look before he was even able to attack it. Subsequently, every single shinobi nation surrounding Konoha surrendered in Advachi, not ever wanting to fight him. Period. He had become bigger than the Yellow Flash, and replaced him as Hokage. Thus was the ruination of the world and such an awesome storyline. Right, now for the story, Genetic Indifference. Chapter 3, Premature Revelations, and a Change in Attitude. Naruto sat at the retractable table in the small one-man apartment, it being the replacement that the Hokage had waiting for just an occasion as this. Many heads rolled, when the old man had discovered what had happened and he was glad he had thought of such an eventuality, actually, this was one of the emergency housing units for refugees and other civilians in a time of crisis, but that did not matter. All Naruto needed to do was get a new apartment, most probably one supplied by the Hokage, seeing as it was the residents of the village that destroyed his last one. There was also the unfortunate fact that some of the members responsible for the arsonist actions against Naruto's old apartment were not caught yet. Even normal civilians are capable of evading ninja, especially with a council secretly backing them. But what was the boy doing now? Playing that, scroll, game. It was hard, very hard, as usual, and it was getting noticeably harder to even survive in such a thing. Almost like it, evolved, whenever he gained the upper hand. So he left it on the table and lay down on the couch, what the hell would one do right now, especially with a massive headache? Well, there was always eating something, or maybe a run around the village, he cringed, remembering how he came across that thought. He had seen a man in a green leotard racing a man with a headband over one eye. Such a green suit should not even exist, and he knew that if that guy had students, at least one would get brainwashed by the man, and probably wear the same stuff. The man was even shouting about some thing, like, the fires of youth, or some other weird stuff. Naruto promised himself to knock the boy over the back of the head to see if that would fix him. The teachers usually did that to him whenever he tried to work in class, it always made him think from a different angle, actually. That happens all the time when you get a sudden shock from the back of the head. It makes you lose your thought process of the time, like when he kept getting other pains from simply getting older. Yes, there was still things happening within the boy's body that does not happen in a normal child when growing up. It always had, and by the looks of things, always will. At least all that head tapping the teachers did was helping him and his concentration skills for working under pressure. It annoyed Naruto even more than the pain did, for a moment, Naruto wondered if this was what the old man Hokage was going through by getting older from age as well. He laughed, imagining himself as an old man, walking into the office and calling the Hokage an old man as well, Naruto cringed, the pain's getting to him again. He then noted that it was being focused on select points of his body. His head, at the base of the skull, it was like someone was jabbing a spike into the back of his head. His chest, next to his heart. How he could tell, even E.H. did not know, but he knew. Again, it was like the head pain. Then there was, his spine, again? Well, the whole thing was on fire, and it was really getting to him, beyond reason, because it was his spine. It is where the nerves run along. Translation equals it hurt a lot more. He laid back on the bed next to the table, it being the only seating nearby that he could use. There were no chairs. He waited out the pain, adapting his senses to it, just like every other time. School wouldn't be until three days, oh, how he wanted something to do right now, that didn't involve thought. Ah, what the hell, it can't hurt any further, he said to himself, 
and got up and left the emergency residency unit, locking it on his way out, and went for a run around the village. By the time he got back, he realized that he was kinda out of shape, and would need to get better with things. Three laps of Konoha does that. Plus, when the green clad man with a bowl cut hairstyle and anime tears streaking down his face passed Naruto at least 400 times in a row, it got a little depressing. Maybe that guy lived to circle Konoha on a constant basis and wasn't really human? Within the dark and dank corridors of the blonde's mindscape, Kayubi observed a readout of information on the boy's body. According to the plan, the added and new implant was going to take time, a lot of time. It would still be going, even a little after every other process was complete. Most likely, it wouldn't be complete until every other process was finished anyway, and then some. Possibly would be always growing, or adapting, by the looks of things. As for what the implant would be doing, well, apparently, the scientist adepts that were making him had gathered gene seed information from even the variant chapters, and taken what was beneficial to them and leaving out the dead end mutations that got nowhere. Right now, the effectiveness of all the implants that Naruto would ever be getting was being improved, the better genetic material now altering the current implants for what could easily be known as more cans of kick ass. On further inspection, he found it was creating certain glands that were going to regulate and balance all the implants so chemical therapy maintenance the normal marines would have had to go through to keep on going was now no longer necessary. The Kayubi chuckled, before stopping abruptly, this possibly meant that this boy might just be considered a primarch, now, he couldn't tell whether that was good or bad. Either case, Naruto would be changing the world, big time. The Kayubi laughed, now this information was coming in quickly, and it was getting so funny. He wondered if there was one that allowed the implants to be carried along the generations, through birth, instead of long implantation procedure. Fat chance, as Tora the cat would meow. Now, when is that Susan membrane going to finish? Kayubi mused in his mind, checking those results as well, and decided to go rummaging around the boy's memories to see if the implant was ruining his memory. What he found was, well, it made him wonder if the boy would ever use his gift to its fullest. Anyone could see the boy didn't have that much of an aggressive nature, actually, he seemed to lack one. The boy was almost a pacifist. He didn't like this. A lack of aggression for a ninja would mean copious amounts of fail, and not just in the fighting department. Motivation wise, this meant the boy would not have a reason to do anything, and that was just bad. A prime arch with no objective. Epic fail. Kayubi smirked, oh, he could change that one, easily. Hypnotherapy and useful, ironic suggestion to the rescue. The class waited in their seats, for the teacher, okay, so there was also the case of a missing blonde haired student, but that didn't matter. Sure, he was big, just as big as his heart, but none really cared. No one cared about the boy, despite the fact that he was a kind person. When you're young, arrogance tends to follow, especially when most are just simply focused on becoming ninja. So, when two figures entered the classroom, they all expected the teacher and the notably late and mostly always sick student, known as Uzumaki. Not another support teacher. Kenzo roared over the class, making sure to let them all be seated, and everything was quiet. Now, everyone, I would like to introduce Amino Uruka, an assistant teacher for our classes this year. Good morning, Uruka sensei. The class greeted him. As for Uruka? He was still staring at the man he had just heard roar like an animal, and was mildly impressed at how he handled the students. His brown hair was tied back in a ponytail, keeping it out of the way, and his eyes were black. He had a defining scar over his nose. He was also definitely a chunin, his vest showing its full colors. You um, hello, class, anyone know how Kenzo-san just did that? He asked, before hearing a muffled groan from behind the doorway. Kenzo walked past him saying, I might teach you that tactic later, for we got class work to teach, and he opened the door to let in a student that was called Uzumaki Naruto. Kayubi brat for short, despite the boy's height being anything but. Sorry I'm late, Kenzo sensei, had problems again. Someone blew up my apartment, the boy said, and Uruka widened his eyes. The Kayubi brat had his apartment blown up. By who? They could have killed people doing that, sure. The boy wasn't a problem, but other people. As for the students, a couple of them snickered at his fake excuse, unaware that it was actually the truth. Kenzo simply said, Well, 
Get inside then and take a seat. I'm sure Ruka sensei will introduce himself to you later. And the boy went inside, obviously having a massive headache. He also seemed to have chest pain, and back pain. But it disappeared eventually, and he was fine. As for Naruto, he was glad that the whole head chest back pain thing only happened for a set amount of time each day, before being fine. It almost made the other pains easily bearable, having the sensitivity taken down. Well, let's get things straight for this year's curriculum. You're going to be doing physical conditioning, this got the guys interested. Free gym pass. Cool. More textbook work, this got the class groaning, wondering if they would ever escape such a thing. And, you get to learn chakra channeling 101. The leaf exercise. This was met with cheer, even from the seemingly unwell boy in the corner of the room. Channeling chakra would be awesome. In fact, we're going to be doing it right now. Everyone, get into a line and get ready for a test, we will show a demonstration and then you get to try it out, Kenzo stated, like a games show host. Aruka san if you will he gestured to the young man next to him and Aruka whipped out a leaf and balanced it upon a bare forehead because he had taken his headband down a little for space within a second it was spinning upon his forehead no assistance sighted he was using pure charka control the class simply had the whole oh ah situation going on as they watched then everyone lined up and it became a contest to see who could perform the test with ease Many failed to even make it budge, with the select few clan members getting it to move a little. Shino was the one to make the most movement, claiming it was because of practice with his hive that got him to need it the way it was. Many students, ewed, that piece of information away, and Aruka shook his head. Those students would not make it to Chunin. As for Naruto, well, after the explanation of how to perform the leaf spinning exercises, he had spied a leaf sitting on the floor of the classroom obviously from someone's shoes earlier that morning he picked it up and tried it out himself getting nowhere luckily he was the last to go seeing as uzumaki was alphabetically last but he still only got it budging about three millimeters that was counted only as the wind it sucked having an uchiha right next to you having already done the little test and deciding to put you down a notch even when you're much better then again naruto wasn't from a clan was he running along Naruto looked to the rest of the students in the group. They had been running laps for the better part of an hour, and they were damned tired. Who would have known that the man in charge of physical conditioning was such a sadist and slave driver? Well, second grade in the ninja academy knows now. Looking about, he noted that the clan members like the Inazuka branch members and the Uchiha branch members weren't having as much trouble, but Shino was. Just like Naruto. Although, the unusually broad and tall boy noted that his muscles developed quicker than any other student among them. Well, this was actually week three of the school year, and our, little, Naruto was finding the physical exercises to be getting definitely harder, but oddly easier. He wasn't sure how it was physically possible, but there it was. That's how he was finding it. Well, now that the library was open to all second year students, including Naruto, he might be able to go and look up the definition, should he so wish. Looking ahead, the boy noted a trap upon the ground. Simply a string attached to something in the bushes. Trap making had started for the second graders, and brought with it the skill of trap finding. Naruto jumped over it, which was more like a simple higher step for him, he could see it easy. The student behind him, however, didn't. He didn't have the enhanced eyes that could see Enbu grade ninja wire, a feat in itself to even gain, let alone see. He also didn't know to jump, and instead tripped activating the trap and getting himself sprayed with pink ink marking him as a casualty was it mentioned that this was a survival race no but in the ninja academy you always had to expect the unexpected naruto mused that if he had decided to go around wearing orange and not read up on things he might have been the boy who was walking off the course right now the first to go so he continued along his muscles straining and he was gaining on the boy in front of him by taking longer steps easy too easy it was when he noted the rest of the traps and he dodged them an odd feeling came over him as he realized something he was going all out quite fast for his age yet not that fast as to tire himself out but when he was looking at the traps ahead things were slow moving like he was walking oh right everything seems to be going slow when he had the danger thought in his mind naruto had just figured out how to slow things down around him otherwise known as speeding up one's perception 
To everyone else, it appeared that his reaction time and perception increased quite dramatically. That was surprising. Naruto was then hit by a pressure plate hidden in the ground quite well, triggering a paint bomb, effectively putting him out of the race. It seemed that it was the higher grade students that had set the traps, killing two birds with one stone. The higher grades perfect their trap skills, and the lower grades learn how to evade them. Unlucky for Naruto, he had sprung one made by one Uchiha Itachi, a student in his final year, and a genius in every ninja art there was. He would be graduating this year, no doubt. Naruto was the second last in the race, surprisingly, Shino ahead of him. That's when they all realized, as the teachers praised the Aburame, that the said boy had actually walked. Because of that, no traps could really get him, and the other racers got themselves killed faster because they ran. Had they thought of that before, there would have been the need for more difficult traps, and much harsher rules. Ironically, Itachi's trap would have been sprung anyway. As of now, Shino won the round by using a simple method. Why run when you can walk? Naruto nodded to the Aburame, and the Aburame nodded back. Up next, they had trap making lessons, something that Naruto was starting to like. His headache still pounding again, Naruto rode down each and every mechanical part to a bear trap that could ever be used to make a better item to trap something else. Yeah, this was a think up some random shit for yourselves lesson, just after they had finished listening to a lecture on what traps and ambushes were. Trap a device or tactic intended to harm, capture, detect, or inconvenience a human or animal intruder, an animal pest, or game. Ambush. A long-established military tactic, in which the aggressors, the ambushing force, use concealment to attack a passing enemy. Ambushers strike from concealed positions, such as among dense underbrush or behind hilltops. Ambushes have been used consistently throughout history, even in the times before the forming of the hidden shinobi villages. An ambush predator is an animal which uses similar tactics to capture prey, without the difficulty and wasted energy of a chase. To ambush is to steal, destroy property, or to capture, kill people, a person. Well, that was just what the words were, but Naruto could garner enough to know that he might have a natural affinity for such an art, as he was able to place things in such a way that he could even get the teachers with a well-placed trap. Actually, he managed to get the young assistant teacher, Uruka, with an eraser, chalked up heavily. Said man was not happy about that, he was also expecting something more, demonic. Back to what Naruto was doing, he finished his little page on traps, ambushes and the bear trap mess around, and handed it in, going to the back of the class again. He always sat up back, because no one could hit him in the back of the head with anything. So, as the class finished up, he looked out the window still remaining silent for the moment. Why? Because it was one of those days, where everything just goes quiet, real quiet. Even Kenzo sensei was quiet, unless he was in lecture mode, after all, it was Friday afternoon, when everyone could not wait for the weekend. Then the bell went, and people left the room, ready to go home. Naruto headed for the library instead, deciding to do some reading on random subjects. He found a random subject about inner voices and the fact that they are either a separate identity to one's self, like locked away emotions, or an actual sealed spirit, if there was a seal upon one's body anywhere, he decided to drop that subject, it seemed a little too weird, and went for a different one. He found one on basic seals, like storage seals and explosive seals, that sounded, interesting. He started reading, even going so far as to borrow it from the library and go home to continue reading it. He placed it in his bag as he left, and walked home. On his way home, however, things didn't go as planned. Look who it is, guys, it's that brat who doesn't die, even in a fire. One villager said, pointing out Naruto on the road. He had gone home, only to find it wasn't there. Oh right, it got burnt down, much to the third Hokage's annoyance. So, he had then walked along to his current residence, but was spotted by some villagers. He reminded himself to point these guys out as the arsonists that damaged Konoha property to the Hokage later on. It's not like these guys could actually do much. Hell, Naruto was tall already. Then there was the quick healing factor, and the fact that these guys only really tried to beat him up with bats, fists, and broken chairs and stuff. They didn't have much in the way of weapons, that meant they couldn't really kill him, so he feared not, for pain was simply an illusion to him. A smell came across his nose, and he smelt heavy amounts of sake, like, 
It was practically rolling off these guys. They were intoxicated arsonists. Nice. Maybe a pitchfork or three might help him, said another, and Naruto realized that these guys were armed with pitchforks. Running time, he said to himself, and took off quickly, wanting to get out of there quite fast, running around into the next alleyway to loose the pursuers. He found there was a drug deal happening right there, in front of him. Wow, talk about unlucky for the day. He had just stumbled upon the darker side of Konoha. He made another note to his mental notepad, to also inform the Hokage about the illegal drugs in Konoha issue, and one of the locations that he had just found. You know what? Forget the drugs, man. I got a better idea. Let's get the demon brat. One of the men stated in the alleyway, obviously a buyer. Good idea said the dealer, and pulled out a sword, oh, nice, the man was a ronin, most probably wanted. Naruto took a few steps back, before realizing that there were three men with pitchforks behind him. Oh, um, talk about unlucky, he stated, looking at both parties in front of him, and behind him. Oh, unlucky, alright, demon, said the drug dealer. Geez. Why do you keep calling me that? Why does everyone keep calling me that? He asked. Actually, this was the first time he asked it. The drug dealer smiled. He, well, seeing as they're still finding me and already have a kill on sight, order with me. I might as well tell you, said the drug dealer. Tell me what? The boy asked, raising an eyebrow, making sure to keep as much distance from either party for as long as possible. Who are you? Me? I'm just a passing ronin. Blade the Impaler, said the ronin drug dealer, striking a pose. Naruto and the rest of the group looking at the man like he was stupid. He raised his sword into the air for emphasis, and the sword shone black, like midnight blue, okay, so he may actually have some power there. He then pointed the sword at the blonde, announcing, and you have the Kyubi in you, demon, it was sealed away by the fourth Hokage when you were born so he could kill it, he died before he could, so we're gonna do that for him, and then I won't have a bounty on my head anymore, I'll be a hero. Naruto just stood there, eyebrow raised, you know, I've heard a lot of bullshit from teachers who wanted to sabotage my education quite a lot, but that one right there is the cream of the milk, nice one, man. Can you come up with a better one? He asked, not believing a single word the man spoke. Look, he may not be able to sound convincing, but he's telling the truth, Kyubi. You are the nine-tailed fox, reincarnate. We're gonna kill you for the damage you did, for all the people you killed. Okay. Said a farmer behind him, his pitchfork at the boy's neck. Damn, how'd he get so close? It's just that Hokage of yours made a law that forbids us from ever telling the younger generation, under penalty of death, said the ronin. Naruto looked between the two, wondering what they were talking about, then he remembered the fact of his current body structure. It wasn't human, so did that make him human, or a demon? You aren't a demon. You're an angel of death. A voice told him. Great, he just found he has suppressed emotions somewhere. Why? He has a voice in his head, a deep dark voice. That has to mean something, right? Yeah, Naruto was going crazy, that's all. It's a voice, just a voice. Yes, I am a voice, I am also the reason you have such a body as it is, and such a mind. I am the experiment, KYUBI 9, otherwise known as the Nine Tailed Fox, the King of Demons, it continued freaking out the boy. The men in the alley took this as a sign of the demon fearing them, and laughed. Damn, they were telling the truth. That meant that he was not human, but a demon. Now, if you think that you are any part demon, in any way, neophyte, I suggest you look at these men, and then compare yourself to them, mentally. Who is the bigger demon? You, who hasn't fought much, if at all, you bloody pansy, or them the ones who go and corner a boy in an alleyway to kill him for no discernible reason. The men approach the boy, he's scared. The demon is scared. Let's kill it while it has that expression, he shouted, and went to stab the boy in the heart. Everything went in slow motion for the boy, as the voice talked to him. Don't stand there, fight. Show them that you are a demon, one they created, it said. No, then the Hokage might then have a reason to be mean to me. Really, are you sure? He seems so kind already, despite the fact that he is so old, he can't be mean to you. He seems to already know that you have me in you, but still is kind to you, but these people beyond his control are not. And what will be said if I kill these guys? 
The dark voice chuckled for a moment, who said you had to kill all of them, maybe make an example, but kill? No, but also, didn't they say that informing you of me would be against the law, punishable by death? Killing them is easily justified. No, that isn't right, said the eight-year-old boy, not wanting to be a mean person. Nothing is right. There are some things that must be fought for, like becoming Hokage, you do want to become Hokage, right? Yeah, and show these guys to respect me. There was an obvious air of urgency as the Kayubi shouted, Well then, defend yourself or die, boy. What could Naruto do? He couldn't help himself, he reacted. The man pushed his pitchfork to the boy's chest, only to see the boy sidestep him and grab the thing, pulling it free of the man's grip quite easily. Hey, demon brat, give that back, the man shouted. The kid simply responded with, If I am a demon, then I am one that the village has created by sheer negligence. Go a horse, farmer. He stated, and tripped the man quite quickly, causing the other two to attempt to stab the boy as they came to their friend's aid. Naruto saw it in slow motion, deciding to bat away one with the pitchfork, and evade the other. He then ducked as he heard a swooshing of air being cut, and the midnight blue katana glided overhead, the ronin taking a swing. Naruto gave the man a kick to the knee that was blocked with a foot. Naruto rolled away, keeping the pitchfork in front of him as a defense using it like a makeshift glaive. One of the men was about to attack, but the ronin got in front of him, leave this to me, he chuckled. Nothing can defend against this bitch, he shouted, swinging the sword in a downward swing, and Naruto made to block it, only to widen his eyes in shock as the blade cut through it like a hot knife through butter. Either case, Naruto was now holding two halves of a pitchfork, and that's when the buyer pulled out a shuriken, he was a shinobi. Naruto saw things yet again in slow motion as he swatted the flying projectile out of the air, attempting to get away. The shuriken landed into the torso of one of the farmers, and he dropped. The other two did not look happy. The one who got tripped got up and picked up his dead friend's pitchfork, and they advanced on the boy with murderous intent. It turned into a cornering action as Naruto found himself against a wall, two halves of a pitchfork in his hands, and beset upon by four armed people. He was panicking these guys could kill him, especially the ronin and the shinobi. He felt like a cornered animal. Fear is what he felt. He wanted to live, to survive and become Hokage. And these guys are in your way, will you become your potential and take action? They were getting in closer, they corner you like a small animal, as if they should expect that from my work, show them what an animalistic human you can be, let them see what a cornered beast can do, it said, giving a very convincing argument. And Naruto roared. This wasn't just any roar, but a true, animalistic roar, like a tiger, a lion, wolf, fox, or whatever, it was like a true beast, no idea which, like it was all of them in one. That's when they noticed the slightly extended canines in his teeth, and that he was gripping the two halves of the pitchfork like they were, clubs. Charging forwards towards the shinobi first, the boy went low, and kicked the man in the shins before he could react, and he bent over in pain of his legs as Naruto whacked him in the face with the bottom half of the pitchfork, knocking the man three feet up into the air, and hitting the ground in one fluid motion. He was out for the count. Actually, even the wooden shaft of the pitchfork felt that. One of the farmers took action before the ronin could blink at the downed shinobi, and thrust his pitchfork forwards to the boy, hoping to impale the boy, but instead only loosing his pitchfork as the boy whacked his knuckles hard, and the man dropped the thing, before Naruto moved behind him as the ronin went to stab the boy and instead got the farmer, killing the man instantly. The other farmer widened his eyes and ran, seeing the ronin pull the blade free and not even care that he had killed an innocent farmer, quite the hypocrite, eh. Now the only two conscious people in the alleyway, Naruto and Blade the Impaler stood toe to toe. Before the man jumped into the air and swung down, missing Naruto as he sidestepped the man and hit the flat edge of the blade with the headpiece of the upper pitchfork half and thrust it quite hard into a wall, trapping the blade right there, as he then sent a kick to the man's nether regions, eliciting a high-pitched scream from the man, before Naruto then yelled in the man's ear, get a better name, bitch. Before he punched the man on the side of the skull, hard, knocking him into next week. You got knocked the out, bitch, Naruto yelled at the man, pointing at his face as he stood over the unconscious ronin, just as the Hokage arrived with his entourage of Anbu guards. Hey, old man, you know there was so much you could have told me, 
You know, like the fact that there is this ing nine tailed fox stuck in my head, he shouted to the man. Lucky this area was not inhabited at this time of the day, or there would have been much too much trouble to sort out. Either case, for the aged Hokage, he knew one thing. Oh, this would be a troublesome explanation. Sitting in the Hokage's office, Naruto was speculating what he was just told by the Hokage. He was not, in fact, a demon, but really just a container. As to his growth, the Hokage had made a theory that it was the demon he held making his prison more secure against attack as a self preservation policy. That made him worry about the sanity of most of the inhabitants of the village he was in, and whether or not they were sane to even begin ethnical cleansing against him. Although, it was a ninja village, so maybe there were some who might be able to kill him and want to try, he had absolutely no idea if it was true, but still. It worried him, this insanity of theirs. As for what this nine tailed fox was doing to his body, he decided to go and ask the source, to go into his mindscape. Thing was, he didn't know how. How the hell will I even be able to ask that furry bastard about what he's doing? He asked in his mind. It responded, much to Naruto's surprise. Maybe you could ask that as well, eh, boy? Or should I say, neophyte, it stated. Wait, neo what? He asked. Neophyte, the title of a person such as yourself, but in the context I'm using it in, it is a trainee or recruit that is going to be, or already has been, trained in combat heavily, and is undergoing genetic and bio-augmentation processes. Wait, what? Oh, right, you don't know where I'm actually originally from, hence, you wouldn't understand a single thing I say, would you? The fox chuckled. Naruto looked to the analog clock in the room, and the fact of where the Hokage was. Said Hokage was in a meeting with the Elder Council again, about how Naruto had defeated a ronin with a bounty on his head, earning him some kind of reward. Danzo, you will not take him in for any sort of rude emotions training, even with this slight change of attitude in the boy's personality, the Hokage stated. Well, Serutobi-san, I see no reason then, for him to join the ranks of normal shinobi, for even you have seen his body build, and its modifications, Danzo stated. Those files are under restricted access, even from you. How did you hear of it? Serutobi asked, wanting to know. I have my contacts. Danzo stated, calmly. Root? Serutobi stated. Then one of the other council members spoke up, an old lady that was the Hokage's old teammate. Root was disbanded years ago by your orders, here is in San. You know they no longer exist, she stated. Tell that to Danzo, then. The Hokage replied enough let us get back to the matter at hand the boy and the bounty hiyashi of the hyuga clan stated a little irate good idea hiyashi san naruto san and the punishment for murder of a villager said another council member a civilian member naruto was not in possession of any weapon capable of the wound that villager suffered hito san the ronin blade the impaler was even the yaminaka clan can back that they were present at Ibiki Kun's handiwork. Serutobi then countered, and parts of the council found itself at a loss of excuses to kill the demon host that would be in service to the village later on, a bad move to be contemplating in the first place. Look, Hokage sama, esteemed council, this is going to get too troublesome if this continues any further. He took down a notable figure in the Konoha criminal circuit, a drug lord in Ronin, that had a bounty on his head, just give him the payment, pat him on the head and let's get discussing things of a more relevant matter? You dogs who hate the boy have made it far too much of an issue, and everyone else is suffering because of it, what about the whole security issue with the Sanin and other rising problems in our own circle? It is all too troublesome. Said a very lazy yet smart man, Shikaku of the Nara clan. The bunch of lazy geniuses. He had said quite a lot, and that was saying something, he only said something if it meant something, and so people would listen if he spoke. They then sweat dropped as he put his head to the table and fell asleep. The Uchiha clan head then stood up, Fugaku announcing, Yes, I agree with him. Let us move on to something more, important. I have time. The old man will be in there for hours, with whatever they talk about, Naruto stated in his mind. The fox, not one to be surprised, jumped right into the story. Okay. Kid, there are several universes, or types of existence, now. The one I am from, is not this one, instead, it is one where mankind has reached beyond the stars, and is technologically superior. 
in a sense. But they have no such thing as chakra. They had lost quite a lot of technology knowledge at some point, due to an unknown amount of war, and were fighting for survival against all sorts of things. Aliens, mutants, traitors, you name them, oh, and demons, much more sinister than myself. They originated from the fabric of space that makes up every universe, the warp. Actually, I'm a warp entity, but I'm not sure if that means anything to you, or if it will do anything for you. At one time, there was this guy, the Emperor, who created twenty enhanced human beings, known as the Primarchs, and was going to go and save the rest of mankind, but those twenty went missing, so, he got his work and made the first ever space marine, the Legion Astartes. He created more, to make an army, and went and took the galaxy back for mankind. Eventually, he found the rest of the Primarchs from the planets that they had practically gained positions of leadership by themselves, and with the genetic material from said Primarchs, made the space marine creation process more effective. Then one of the Primarchs went and betrayed the Empor at the height of their victory, and everything went downhill. They almost lost their entire conquest, and eventually defeated the traitor and his legions, only for the Emperor to have to go onto a life support for the next 10,000 years. The Space Marines got split up into 10,000 men strong chapters so that such a horrific and sudden bout of traitorous action can't be repeated on that scale, and the reconquest began. At some point, some people from the Adeptus Mechanicus, Adeptus Apothecus, and the Adeptus Astartes decided to make a new and improved Space Marine, a Space Marine Mark II, the first would be known as the Primarch to the MK2 Astartes. It was conducted in a science lab with a device call signed the Kyubi 9 ironically in room 9 of the lab station, somewhere in the warp, but when they were just completing it, the forces of chaos struck, hitting the station and attempting to get the device, me. I went was then afloat through the warp, as I got misplaced by reality, and was found by Kami, who then gave me the form of the nine-tailed fox, and so, the rest is history. I became the demon king, and then one day got hit with some sort of genjutsu probably a Sharingan based one if my guess is right with there being only one person ever once being able to control me, where I then found myself outside the village, having been raining destruction upon the lands. It was quite a ing annoying and utterly shit experience that one could bitch on about for years, blabbering about the ing cunt who placed the piece of shit genjutsu upon my mind and stuff. Naruto widened his eyes at the amount of knowledge this guy had, and then further at the last bit of foul language the fox then initiated in anger of the man who cast the genjutsu on him, um, Kayubi, younglings in the room. You don't count, you're enrolled in a school that trains killers, it doesn't matter. What does matter is the fact that I've been improving your body with the implants that I was created to implant and grow, so thank me, neophyte, for you are going to almost become a god amongst men here on this country of elemental nations. You're going to be the primarch of the Mark II's. An Adeptus Astartes. Congratulations, kid. Naruto slapped his forehead with his hand, this was going to be interesting to say the least. This is when the Hokage walked in, with a letter, addressed to one Uzumaki Naruto. This was going to be an interesting explanation to the Hokage. Have fun, neophyte, I'll be overseeing your development from here. One very outrageous explanation later. The Hokage had long since dropped his pipe from his mouth, his eyes wide and his jaw agape. N Naruto kun, this means you have a bloodline, no? He asked the boy. Naruto scrunched up his face, thinking, or in his case, talking. Don't know, Q san doesn't know if it will be able to be passed on to the next generation, he said, not knowing what the term meant. Either case, Naruto, I recommend not telling anyone of this. Keep it a secret like your tenant, he told the child. I plan to. The two are related subjects. How do you explain my height, though? Naruto asked. Just like we always have. You grow fast, the Hokage stated, and sat down. Naruto looked to the envelope that the Hokage then handed to him. I suggest you open it. You might find something useful in it, he stated. Naruto did exactly that. The declaration was heard all the way outside of the soundproofed room. Holy shit. Taking off his Hokage's hat for the day, Sarutobi sighed as he took out his smoking pipe, lighting it with a small fire jutsu. This is too much for an old man like me, who would have thought that the Kayubi was being controlled by that Uchiha, who would have thought the man was still alive. He mused, thinking of one person that should be dead by now. Uchiha Madara, only you could ever put a powerful enough genjutsu to control a tailed beast, 
what are you planning with this, old dragon? Everyone entered the classroom and got ready for the day's lessons, unaware of the minor bombshell that was about to be dropped on them. Well, anyway, walking into the classroom, was Naruto, with a nice pair of durable combat boots, the kind that could be put through any treatment and survive without a single scratch. They also looked quite comfortable, and flashy. Then there was the rest of Naruto Uzumaki. Baggy long shorts, gray, green, with a crimson undershirt covered with a black short sleeved jacket, unbuttoned, was the style. Then there was the goggles, they kinda made him look a little stupid, but the theory was understandable. It would stop things getting into one's eyes and stuff, even if they were in the place of where his ninja headband would be in the future. Walking past a particular student who liked poking fun at others, he was almost tripped. Why do you become a shinobi, sickly? The boy asked. Sorry, didn't hear you. I had this feeling of needing to beat the crap through you, like I did to someone not so long ago. Naruto stated, and walked away, leaving a few mouths agape. He walked over to Shino, and sat down beside him. Shino said one thing. Show off. Naruto simply smiled back at him. Killjoy. Just because I brought a drug dealing ronin known as, Blade the Impaler, to justice. The ones who heard this, mainly sweat dropped, but a few knew who he was talking about, only one did not believe him. Sasuke Uchiha, the new kid in the class next door, was walking by. There was no way that big dumb looking guy took out a ronin on his own. Naruto placed his bag on the ground, and there was a bit of a thud to its weight. Okay, maybe he did, he looks old enough, wait, why is he in the academy at his age? He thought, thinking the boy older than he actually was, based on the kid's height. His musings were cut short as Kenzo, the teacher, walked in with Uruka, the assistant. Sasuke went to his own class. Well, today, everyone, we do another run on the leaf spinning exercise, he shouted, shutting everyone up. Naruto still didn't have much of the exercise down, and he was wondering how well he would do. In the end, he yet again got the leaf to go at least a millimeter, only a millimeter. Even Uruka saw how much the boy was trying, demons don't try. The year went by, and the students got to lean more about tactics, theory, and the advanced stuff, including infiltration, trap making, and the likes. Physical conditioning wise, Naruto was beating everyone in the field, but most of the teachers refused to admit it, the council would not stand for it. Naruto did not mind, as it meant he always had the drop on anyone who thought he was weak, pretty much almost everyone who hadn't fought him before. Uchiha Sasuke was the first place in the class below them and Shino of Naruto's grade was not even trying, stating that his current body build wasn't for strength, but for something different, he was almost last, with many of the females beating him for last place, most of those ladies were fangirls to the Uchiha, and didn't actually join to become ninja. As to the leaf spinning exercise, it was, well, it was Shino who was winning, yet Naruto was not getting very far, at all. Why? Apparently he had way too much chakra to throw around, it was obvious when he focused too much on it, causing it to split in two, crumple, get soggy, then it turned to dust, before seemingly bursting into flames. This had everyone raising eyebrows, but the teachers knew better. The kid had so many affinities, it just wasn't funny. The affinity boy to the rescue, saving villages from a lack of all-around affinities, it made no sense. Who were the parents to this boy? Or was it the boy's tenant? Either case, Naruto had to find a way to get this thing done. In order to pass the year, he had one week and one survival camp to go to get it done, that's right. There was a survival camp again, and it was time again for the fun objective of locate a place. It was a good thing he had put his money into an account, set up for academy students and the like, one that would turn into a ninja account as soon as he graduated. What he did not know, was that the objectives of the survival camps were as random as the forest it was set in. Your objective is to find this kind of flag base, take a flag, and get back here. You get no extra points for extra flags, because that is just plain stupid. All grades get different types of bases to find, sans the first two years, who are going to be formed into one section, due to numbers. Stated the survival camp proctor. He had a picture of a base with flags in it, and apparently there were several bases around the academy survival course. The objective was a capture the flag situation, but there was a twist that none had known about. They didn't know the camps were guarded by older grade members. Sure, there was a no kills policy going on, 
with proctors making sure that there was no unnecessary deaths, but that still meant danger. And as for the groups, Naruto and Shino found themselves teamed up with Sasuke, the raven-haired boy whose father was the head of the Uchiha clan, and he had the hairstyle of a duck's other end. Naruto decided not to poke fun at it, as that would be just plain stupid, he wasn't immature. The fire jutsu went off, and the students ran off to find their bases, no maps, but with all the necessary survival gear and some paper and pencils. Sasuke was getting extra revved up for this, for he was promised by his older brother that he would be taught the clone jutsu if he actually got a flag. Then again, this exercise wasn't necessary to pass, it was simply for some fun in a way, fun, and a chance to practice certain skills in a mock simulation. Into the forest, three days in. So, Uchiha-san, you want to add anything? Naruto asked the boy, the three of them in their supplied survival jumpsuits having just tried to figure out any sort of idea on flag base locations. The boy in question looked up at them, shaking his head. Nope, none at all. Uzumaki-san, maybe when we find a base, what about Aburame-san? He stated, all three kids using formal tones, somehow, he could see himself following this broad and tall Uzumaki, kid for some reason, like he was a natural leader. Sasuke was in no way an arrogant prick, despite the norm for all Uchiha to be that way in general. I already have my bugs on a search pattern, and they will be periodically sending me messages about any anomalies. He stated, pressing his shades back onto his face as he looked upon the map he had drawn with the assistance of his bugs. Getting up, all three did, they rolled up the map and placed it into one of their bags, and moved out. Naruto walked by ahead, before a tree came crashing down on him. A ying tree. Sasuke charged after the blonde, going to take the tree off him. That's when Shino put a hand on his shoulder. This is Uzumaki-san under that tree, it will take more than that to kill him, with what I've seen him do, he stated, looking at the fallen tree. Suddenly, the tree moved a little, and then rolled off the boy, who was completely okay. He got up and dusted himself off, like it was nothing. Um, a ying tree landed on him. Aburame san, just what is this man made of? Sasuke asked. He is actually our age, he just grows fast and is, as someone of a lesser vocabulary would say, a ying brick shithouse of tough nails. Shino stated, as Naruto observed the base of the fallen tree. They've set up some of the trees to fall down, see the minor explosive note residue? He stated, and the Uchiha took a look. Um, no student has that in their inventory, Uzumaki san. This was an outside job, Sasuke stated, and looked at the residue. Well, he knows the composition, explosives and traps being something he has been trying to surpass his older brother in. Something's not right, he speculated. Sitting in the tree, his older brother watched and observed. Let's see how well you do, little brother. Agreed. Shino stated. Right, guys, we go in a loose formation. If someone gets hit, we make sure to dig them out to safety and the loose formation will make sure only one of us is possibly down. Keep low, and watch the floor, he stated, setting a direction with his compass. Then, Shino perked his head up, getting the attention of the other two. He held out his hand, and then brought it to eye level with his shades. Both kids could see that a bug had landed on his finger. After what seemed to be a small conversation with the bug, Shino let it go and turned to the two kids. There is a base to the north, two hours walk, he stated. But it's guarded by higher level academy students, he finished. Sasuke's eyes went wide. He then smirked. Let's show them that we're born to be ninja. Naruto smiled, morale was so easy when it came to this kid. Run for it, Sasuke stated, his plan a failure, and Shino getting back as a minor explosive note went off, sending Naruto into the nearby river. Two fourth graders advanced on the two, and they ran knowing that the river will bring Naruto to them where they went. The academy students went back to where they were, guarding the flag base. And Sasuke got worried as soon as he saw that Naruto was floating with his back above the water, face down, that was over seven minutes ago. Shit, Naruto sands out, he stated, before Shino shook his head. What? He can survive this? He asked the quiet boy. At least for twenty more minutes, he stated. That was when Naruto hit the edge of the bank, and he got up, water rolling down from his mouth as he emptied his third lung of it all, not that anyone else knew he had one. Within moments he was back to breathing normal air again. 
Hey guys, he stated, and they noted that there was no wound from when the minor explosive went off. We need another plan. Run for it. Sasuke stated once again, the plan of failure a second time. This time, he was the one to hit the water. But he was still conscious, and swam back to shore, to see Shino take down an academy student with his bugs. At first, the older academy students always gained the upper hand as explosives went off, but it seemed to be a total ruse. Sasuke was simply hit with the moment, and found himself weak as an illusion. Not to be outdone, the Uchiha then jumped back into the action, taking down another academy student with an axe kick to the stomach as soon as he tripped the boy with a kanai and ninja wire, so that's why it was provided, he realized, before taking a stance with the Aburame and they went back to back. Okay, forget what I said, let's them over. Where had the boys lent such language? Must be the higher grades, and video games. Fat chance. Video games give a tool for others to sat hungers for violence. Looking ahead, he saw Naruto facing off against five students, one of which was almost unconscious. Okay, never mind. The kid was now totally unconscious, courtesy of a boot to the chest. Naruto then went to attack the nearest one, when one of the others pulled out the minor explosive tags. All the rest did as well. Naruto, get out of th. Sasuke's shouting was drowned out as soon as the explosion started. These students did not know the word, restraint, but they did know the word, stunt. They used the explosions to spin Naruto around like a leaf in the wind, and the boy was angry. Sasuke went to attack the nearest one, hitting the boy in the back of the head with a karate chop and taking him down. Shino made to take down another, but a stray explosive made that particular student fly into the air and into the nearby river. Wow. What a conveniently placed river. As for Naruto, the students were hoping to disorient that boy into oblivion, and knock him out of the game. They did not know of his situation or status, or rumors. But Naruto did. He knew that he could not get dizzy, not since the Kyubi had given him that thing called the, Lyman's ear, yep. Kyubi had told him the names of the organs he had, as a small anatomy fact when they were studying the said subject in the academy at some point. And speaking of academy, he still had that leaf exercise to master, too bad his chakra control would keep making him do nothing. Whatever he used on the leaf was like an explosion. Oh, what an idea. But back to the matter at hand, the students had stopped spinning the boy as they found two of their number missing. They went to fight the Uchiha and Aburame, who had formed back to back as they surrounded them, thinking that the Uzumaki was out of the game for a while with that disorienting stunt. Naruto ran to one of the boys and picked him up by the throat, throwing him to the ground in one move, an animalistic roar following. Taijutsu. What's that? They didn't teach it until next year, unless you were a clan member. Then you had your own family techniques like Shino and Sasuke had right now. But Naruto. He was just pure animal and beast, with what he just did. Knocked the out, bitch. He stated, and the looked at the other fourth grader. Boo. The last, still conscious boy just ran. Three against one says, you. Itachi raised an eyebrow. Sasuke did impress him with a comeback in morale, but it was Uzumaki that got him curious. Sasuke, Shino and Naruto walked back into civilization, each holding a flag for them. They had been the seventh to get back. Sasuke was approached by Itachi, and the brothers walked off after shaking Shino's and Naruto's hands. One week later, and each student in that year had to pull the leaf spinning exercise. Naruto passed after he used his usual overpowered chakra bursts to spin the leaf via outward force. That worked. Naruto smiled. Hey, even the headache stopped. Apparently, it was called the Susan membrane, allowing him to assume a state of stasis for an almost indefinite amount of time. Like that was needed. But now there was this melanochromic organ that was being grown somewhere but only the Kyubi knew where. Naruto took satisfaction in the fact that there was going to be no pain in the growth of this one, that's all he was caring about for now. He smiled, even as a certain Uchiha was then secretly taught the clone jutsu. Maybe things could get better. The human body is a wondrous thing. The ability to survive a wide variety of environments with the use of the developed brain, and opposable thumbs, the human animal has survived for quite some time having not needed to evolve for quite some time. Much like the great white shark. The fact that the race known as, humans, have discovered and after many years of war and fighting amongst each other, 
perfected the usage of chakra in the human body and beyond. The heart is what keeps the blood pumping throughout the human body, getting oxygen from the lungs that draw it in from the air. The rest of the human body then gets the needed energy to continue working. A secondary source of energy, one used not in just maintaining and keeping the body working, but letting it grow, the stomach and intestines, known as the digestive system, processes matter consumed by the body, spreading it out as backup energy and growth material for the body in general. As for the brain, the most complex part of any body, a collection of neural bundles and electro signals between nerves to make up sentient thought, it is what keeps things running in an orderly fashion. Keeping the heart pumping in even beats, making sure the lungs draw in air, then exhale. Keeping the muscles around the stomach, intestines, esophagus, and other areas in motion. The brain is the control center to the base. CEO to the organization. Mayor to the town. Emperor to the empire. Cage to the hidden village. Wow! Naruto thought, reading a book on anatomy. Thinking about it in that way, the human body makes sense so much more. Yes, Naruto was reading up on anatomy in his spare time, as it was the holidays, and he had nothing better to do at the moment. He had already done his physical training for the morning. As to why he was even thinking of reading about anatomy? He was curious as to how different he was to a normal chakra using human. What he found made him wonder if he even needed stealth. Wait, stealth isn't just for my safety, so it would still be quite necessary, he thought to himself, before taking a look at himself again. Then again, if I'm this tall already at this age, then I am going to have trouble. I wonder if there are any ninja who are incredibly large and still capable of being shinobi. He thought to himself, putting down the book as he had finished it. It was the fourth very thick book in the pile, and he had taken the afternoon and night to finish them. If there are any large ninja to be students in the academy anytime soon, I am so going to ask how they do it, wait, better yet, ask the big ones who have already graduated, if there are any. He then continued in his head. He had sadly never heard of the Akamichi family, and the fact that the well-fed clan of eaters were also masters of destruction with their fists, feet, and rolling meat tank, and meat shield tactics. If he met them when he was older, he would stare eye to eye to them, and then grow taller. But he didn't know that right now, so it would be saved for later. Taking a look out the window, he saw what time of night, no, time of morning it was. Yeah, he had read through the night again. With his catalepsy node in the back of his head, the sleep deprivation issue was not really an issue for him, at least, not for a while. Eventually he had to sleep, but only if he really had to. As of now, he was currently not even 24 hours awake, and still not even tired. It was 5 o'clock in the morning, exercise time. The fires of youth shine brightly in that boy, Kakashi-kun. Stated, no, bellowed the weird black greasy bowl cut-haired man wearing a green leotard. And nothing but a green leotard. Well, other than a Konoha forehead protector. Wrapped around his waist like a belt, it was horrible. The real problem with it all? If made a guy decided to follow you, he would follow you. Outrunning him would be next to impossible, and simply stopping would not work, as he would then be next to you talking about the fires of youth. The springtime of youth, as it were, forever. Well, seemingly forever. As for Naruto, this was his main motivation to keep running, as he would at least do something with the last few moments of his mental sanity. Oh great, now I'm hungry. He then stated, sure, he had a good breakfast at his apartment, with the money he now had since last year, but still. Out in the outskirts of the village, with a man following you that you do not want to have the knowledge of the location one sleeps at, and you had a small problem. Then again, running for seven hours straight does that, it was midday. For Sasuke Uchiha, the day was. Weird, he knew that father was in a clan meeting, but everything about the Uchiha district just felt. Off. Wrong. Like there was something here that just wasn't. Right? The most weird part? Sasuke could actually spot when it had actually started, and who it was. It was some very odd looking man, with a hood on, with his father right now. His eyes, they were yellow. Yellow. More importantly, Sasuke could see that there was an eyelid on his forehead. What? A. Third. I. Or something. Everything about him just didn't make sense. Not his walk not his mood, not even his voice, his coat just oozed shadow. Maybe he was a ninja? That had to be a jutsu. Sasuke ignored it, 
deciding to continue on with his training, even during the holidays. He had a sibling to catch up to, he had a sibling he no longer understood. Sasuke was cut, deeply, by the fact that Itachi had just killed his parents, their parents, but, that wasn't the odd thing about it. He'd also killed that odd-looking man. The odd-looking man who was making all of his nightmares come true, it was. Not right. He had made mother try and kill him, her own son. It was when his third eye opened that things started not making sense. It was like reality itself was no longer present. Sasuke couldn't have been sure if it was a genjutsu or not. It was impossible to tell. Then, Itachi had killed mother, then father. This was after Sasuke had walked home after school, as Hayuga san had told him to be very careful for some reason, she looked scared. Probably with good reason, he thought, as he had spied the bodies in the clan grounds, probably spotted something with her bloodline. He then made the connection that they were his clansmen, and he started breaking down, running, he tried looking for his parents. Only to find them laughing, looking about. He saw his mother. Mom, he called out. She saw him, and walked to him with an odd look in her eye. The man's third eye opened. Is that you, son? Fugaku, his father, asked. Yes. Why? Sasuke answered, unsure on what was going on. It felt like gravity was both heavy, yet light. Dizzy. You? Why did you kill everyone? Matoko asked, much to Sasuke's shock. What? What? It was at this point that she roared bloody murder and charged at him. His own mother, at 4.55 in the afternoon, tried to take his life. Itachi cut her down. Sasuke didn't even see him appear. Then, Fugaku tried to kill them. Itachi cut him down, too. The man looked at Itachi. Itachi looked back. The man laughed. Itachi seemed frozen. And then the man looked to Sasuke, with all three eyes. He felt unmistakable fear grip his very soul like something was killing him from within. Itachi had killed the man, blowing him up with several explosive notes, but there was still the fact that it was reportedly Itachi who had killed most of the clan. Sasuke wasn't sure what was going on, not even the words of his brother were making sense. Become strong. Do not use hate. In the manor, there is a scroll hidden in a basement whose entrance is hidden by a loose plank. There, you will find the original reason for the Sharingan. From it, you will find the hidden meaning. Get strong, brother. There is more at stake here than the ninja village. This part, he could half understand. He didn't get the part with the scroll. Just where to find it. Find the scroll. From it, get strong. Get eyes like mine. As Sasuke sat on the hospital bed hugging his knees, he made a realization about what he knew of his family and its secrets. Nothing made sense anymore. Years passed. Naruto still felt pain, he still grew things that seemed inhuman. The Hokage's doctor had begun filling out new books on medical knowledge, based on what he had learned from Naruto's physique, and had started improving much of the already low medical standards in the Shinobi Hospital. Sasuke continued to become antisocial, reverting to just training himself into the ground, thinking nothing of family or friends. Only the next lesson. Only to train and get stronger. No hate, no love. The psychiatrist wasn't sure on what to do about it. Perfect mind for a shinobi, not for a kid. Hanada, well, she wasn't sure what was going on. Sure, some pain, here and there. But she attributed it to her growth. Things didn't seem right in the world. Nothing did. Sure, she could hit harder, for longer. She could recover faster than her fellow clansmen. She still felt down about how alone Naruto looked. But why? Why did he interest her so? Was it the way he kept getting back up? No, it was because of one simple fact. She couldn't read his mind, like she could do to most people. She wasn't sure what had happened, or how she had somehow became related to the Yaminaka clan, who also, coincidentally, she couldn't read the minds of. But now she could read minds. Small visions of the future, maybe. But she could read minds. Emotions, surface thoughts, whatever. She could tell when people would look at her pervertedly. Naturally, she started with the baggy clothing to stop that. This was before she found that baggy clothing hid weapons well. Still, Naruto could be nice, and still kick someone's ass. Hanada couldn't bring herself to hit Hanabi, her younger sister. Father called it a waste. Still, school would continue. They had lost their teacher one day, 
as he had gone on a mission, and died protecting some kids who reminded him of his students. Haruka took over, and began to try and teach this bunch of kids like his own. Hanada noted that Naruto failed his graduation the first time around. With that, she saw Haruka, who had previously seemed to hate the boy in the next class, only half laugh. How Naruto had failed, he wasn't sure. He had tried to make the clone jutsu, but he was struck with a moment of monumental pain in his chest at the moment of focus. Then, the next year, he failed again, this time being that the clone jutsu had a major amount of chakra charged into it. There was a moment of monumental pain, again, but he had ignored it successfully. Uruka hadn't laughed then. He had started talking to Naruto about how he could improve. She could tell from the teacher's surface thoughts. Now, it was the start of a new year, and this time, she'd see the boy man she had been watching all this time finally start in her class level. She wondered what it would be like. He was currently the same height as Uruka. Class. Class. Uruka gained the attention of the classroom, his newly minted, big head jutsu, which, basically was a genjutsu, quieting down the students quite effectively. He finally got to the New Year's announcements. What they'll be studying, what they'll be learning. And that this was their final year. Graduation was at the end, if they passed, and then. Also. Another announcement is that we'll be having another student in this class. Sure, we have the two carryovers from last year, Uchiha and Aburame. However, this one was last minute. He turned to the door. Okay, come on through. Hi, sensei said what appeared to be a teen of 17 years of age. Scratching his blonde hair, he took stock of the students. Spotting the Uchiha, Aburame, and several clan heirs and heiresses, he smirked. Interesting. Standing in combat boots, his legs were bound in green cargo pants, strapped where needed by bandages at the ankles and lower legs. His upper body was clad in a green shirt, with a gray-brown jacket over the top. There was no discernible muscle on his person besides that which was on his neck. Stepping next to Uruka, Naruto introduced himself. Greetings. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, the kid your parents have been told to avoid, he announced, grinning. The class was silent. Even Uruka. He honestly had not even thought Naruto would have said such a thing, but judging by the reactions of most of the class, it was also a true fact. What the hell? Was he ever this bad at some point? Uruka chose not to answer himself. Suddenly, one of the students spoke up from the back. Kid, you ain't a kid. You're too old to be here. Go back to work, old man. He joked, and caused half of the class to laugh. Nope. I'm only twelve. The class became quite silent. Bull. Said the same kid. He grows fast. I saw him three years ago. He looked twelve then. At age nine. Shino stated, silently. The whole class heard him. Bullshit, bug boy. I don't buy it, said the same kid again, and he leant back in his chair. What have I said about language in this classroom? Uruka asked, an odd smile upon his face. Suddenly, that very same kid paled. People in the class could not deny it. Naruto may be large, he may be difficult to hide, but he could keep going, going and going. It was three months into the final academy year and everyone was on a trail of traps, the objective being who got to the end first. Or at all. That is, to say, who got to the end without ending up pink. Several people tried to tease some pink-haired girl about this, her name was Sakura. She charged forwards, trying to keep up with Sasuke Uchiha of all things. It turns out, there was a massive fangirl group over the last Uchiha's existence, all of them wanting him in one way or another. Naruto didn't bother thinking about it for long as he continued to run through the course, trees racing by his vision, having seen most of the traps that others could make. He had helped make them for when the lower grades would be running as well, after all. He had done this twice before. Still, his size proved to be the downfall in this test, as he found there were enough strings ahead on his path that he couldn't fit through them with any sort of angle of attack. Cutting them would trigger it, as would touching them. Jumping was out of the question, as it would slow him down, and he might land on another trap beyond. So, he tried to stop, in order to gauge what was beyond it. His size proved to be the problem, as he planted his feet in the ground, the ground giving way as he slid, creating a minor foot deep trench with his weight and mass, his shin made contact with one string as his forehead made contact with another. Bang! Pink mist. Well, paint, actually. 
He was out yet again. Hang on. This trap looked familiar. Looking about at the trees around him, with all the strings attached, he realized who must have planted this trap. He remembered earlier in the day, what they were doing before running the test. Flashback. This is the standard trap run, but, seeing as you're all in the last grade, we make things interesting. Aruka shouted. They were outside, in the nearby academy forest, where they usually made such activities work. Instead of another grade making the course, you will all be making your own way through his course, to make your own traps for others, he announced, bemused. Wait, sensei? Wouldn't that mean it's easier for us? We'd know where our own traps are? Some kid in the back shouted. Yes. So you've got to be extra careful. You get caught looking at anyone else setting a trap, you don't get to run. This whole thing sounded odd. Aruka never usually said, get caught, but several students didn't catch it, obviously. To beat this course, you have to look underneath the underneath, Aruka stated, and there were several smiles all around. Later, Naruto had just set up his trap, a set of pressure strings rigged to set off the pink mist from both sides, and just below the ground, when he sighted a kid with black hair done up like he was a pineapple. The kid had a sort of sleeveless vest on, that didn't really cover much, over a fishnet shirt. Shikamaru Nara. That sleepy lazy kid. Was he doing anything? No. Just drawing something into the ground as he meditated. No, he was just sleep drawing. Flashback end. Thinking back on it, he realized that this trap looked very much like that drawing. He just got taken out by some sleepy lazy kid. There was something more to this. There always was. The kid must be some sort of genius or something. Naruto couldn't tell. But still, as he made his way out of the course with half his chest covered in pink paint, he took note of who had fallen. Ino, a blonde Yaminaka mind reader who was bitching to another pink covered lady, Sakura, was complaining about her hair, it was only half blonde. Looking around, he spotted a fellow giant pink blob. That was Choji. Ah, another of us battle giants have fallen. E.H. Naruto joked as he walked up to the boy. Choji grunted in acknowledgement, pulling out a bag of chips and munching away. Another sudden crack, and a cry of indignation was what preceded a pink dog and his owner charging out of the course. Damn it! Who set up that pressure system five minutes near the end? Kiba demanded. Naruto turned around, staring him down. Never mind. Kiba gulped, scared. This guy was big. Winner. Sasuke Uchiha. Well, that wasn't so hard to predict, was it? Second, Hanada Hayuga, ten minutes later, Shikamaru came up to the finish line, walking. Casually, slowly. Third place, Shikamaru Nara. Shikamaru looked to the referee at that. Third, damn, I was aiming for fifth. Now mother's going to yell at me as to why I wasn't first. He mumbled, Naruto hearing him clearly. Lazy bastard. Naruto muttered under his breath. It was now six months into the year, and Naruto was feeling unimaginable pain across his torso. He couldn't hold it in, moaning as he lay on his floor. He would have had a bed, but he'd recently fallen on it too hard, breaking it. So, now he only had a mattress. Annoying. Getting up, he fought through the pain, as usual whilst he worked through his morning routine. Kanai throwing was the usual lesson after warm-ups, much to the students' chagrin. Most had been wanting to be inside today, as it was hot. But, no. Uruka, ever the sadistic teacher from hell, had them throwing knives at targets. Even Sasuke was looking like he was feeling it, but not Naruto. No, he seemed unaffected by the heat or the sun. His only issue was that he had a distraction, constantly. His chest was hurting like never before, and he couldn't tell why. Once the session was over, the students were ordered into the classroom where they would read, and recover from any potential heat stroke. Water was provided. Well, all the students, bar Naruto, who Uruka kept back to question. You seem a little out of it today, Uzumaki, Uruka mentioned. Yeah, just the heat, Naruto replied. Bullshit, Naruto, you were clutching your chest three minutes ago. That's not a heat-based issue. That's your torso. You're going to the nurse's office, Uruka ordered seeing through naruto's bluff naruto's eyes widened a little i'm under direct orders from the hokage to not go to any other medical center other than the konoha hospital and the hokage's personal staff it's a hidden medical issue 
Same level as my secret that you know of. Aruka's eyes now did what Naruto's did, albeit wider. You know, about it? Aruka asked, suddenly worried. The kid knew. He knew about the beast hidden within him. It made Aruka wonder if Naruto must be tougher than he looked, to be able to handle that. Kind. Of. Hang on. This kid was twelve, but was looking Aruka in the eye. Of course he had to be tough. How much are you holding back, Naruto? You could go so far, Aruka asked, just as he noticed Naruto clutching at his chest again. D damn it. Naruto gasped, suddenly doubling over. Aruka immediately leaned down, and attempted to pull Naruto's arms from his chest. That proved to be almost impossible, the kid's muscles were made of steel or something. Damn, Naruto, what's going on? Aruka was panicked. He had just started on the idea that maybe Naruto wasn't such a bad person that everyone else said him to be. And now said, kid, was on the ground, in pain. He couldn't help the kid, because the kid was honestly stronger than himself. And, not only that, but Aruka could feel the boy's pulse. It didn't feel natural. It must be in some sort of fibrillation. Eventually, Naruto stopped grabbing at his torso, and calmed down. I hate it when that happens. He mentioned, lifting his shirt up to assess any potential outside changes. Wait. This is a common occurrence? Aruka asked, shocked even more. That's when they both noticed a cosmetic change on Naruto's torso. It had darkened considerably around the entirety of it, like it was some sort of bruising. As Naruto applied some force to it, he found it was harder than usual, but still flexible. Hang on. He said, pulling out a kanai. He made to apply some force with it, and found difficulty. Aruka was already backing up, worried over his student now attempting to cut himself. And he thought Sasuke was going to be the one going suicidal. Hmm. Seems I'm even more damage proof than before, Naruto said, taking the kanai away and resheathing it. I think I need to speak to the Hokage about you, Aruka casually mentioned, before leaning on a wall. He felt a headache coming on. I was thinking of still calling you human, and not a demon, but now it appears you're something else entirely. Aruka only realized as he thought back on things, that when he felt Naruto's pulse, it wasn't the rhythm that suggested a heart attack. The pulse was more like two. As though Naruto had two hearts. I mean, after all, we were hoping on not having to tell you about this, Aruka-san. Sarutobi admitted, just before taking a massive drag from his tobacco pipe. Aruka sitting in front of the hokage's desk had wide eyes his jaw was still slack and his head tilted to one side yes naruto is turning into some sort of super soldier and the process is more painful than you could ever imagine lord hokage clarified as aruka's head tilted to the other side do you require a glass of water sarutobi asked humored by aruka's expression aruka fell off the chair hitting the ground with a loud Thump went the chakra, as Naruto, yet again, messed up the jutsu. It was, yet again, graduation tests, and he had just overloaded another set of clones. None of them even formed, having exploded and thrown Aruka off of his feet. Mizuki, the new teacher assistant, had seen fit to take cover behind the desk. We're sorry, Naruto. Naruto understood completely. Walking out of the classroom, he took to the tree next to the swing. Had he been a normal kid, he might even be able to take a go on the swing. But, naturally, he would be too heavy for it. He heard Mizuki approaching. Mizuki sensei. Naruto kun. How are you holding up? Watching from the side, Hanada held her headband in her hands. Recently, she had taken to wearing a bandana around her forehead, as though to hide something. But, she was still a part of the main branch, much to the confusion of her clan members. I will walk a day like my servants. To understand the gap between our families, only then we can repair what this failing situation is turning into, she had announced at the latest clan meeting. Many had been quite surprised at her sudden courage, but she had chalked it up to her admiration for Naruto that powered her. She had even gotten some smiles from her clansmen, much to her happiness. Of course, then there were the Killjoys, members of the clan that looked down upon her even more. One such person was Neji, her cousin. She didn't like the way he would look at her like trash. Even if he was one of her servants. Of course, the rest of the clan didn't know what to do. Her father included. He, for once, held a surprised expression. 
So, she had lived a day without her servants, which wasn't really that different, and done things herself. Which wasn't really that different. It just appeared more publicly that she was independent in her own way. An independent heiress. She liked that title. Of course, to live a day like a clan member servant, she needed to have the bandages around her forehead as though she had the seal. It was mixed in its reception, as she started getting massive headaches all of a sudden. But, after the day was done, she had decided to keep the bandage, mainly as a reminder to the clan for what she was trying to do. Well, officially, anyway, six months ago, she looked back to Naruto sitting by the tree, alone. She would have gone to help him, the one person whose mind she couldn't read, when all of a sudden, Mizuki had arrived next to Naruto. She wondered what this Naruto hating teacher wanted, as she had heard his thoughts since he had started in the classroom a few months back. They spoke for a while, and Hinata decided to find out what they were discussing. Disappearing from the crowd, she went back inside the academy to one of the high windows, where she hid. Looking down to where Naruto and Mizuki was, she took off the bandage somewhat. As the bandages fell away, she focused. There was some sort of line of skin on her forehead, like a slit, horizontal. Focusing, she discreetly dived into Mizuki's mind. Opening her third eye. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.